Hey everybody, Hello. welcome back. And Doxley's going to <laughs> shut the door. Oh my! <laughs> Someone's talking to her weapons again. We have potato skins. <laughs> you get to spend your waking hours making a mockery of the gods. It seems confusing to you. So we used to be on the wagon? No, I'm saying- Going that. back and forth from Piran. This is the catalog for Samson and Samson imports. You hear, <laughs> and some like crashing. Fucking dark fuck. Someone is like, <laughs> hey everybody, Hello. welcome back to Tabletop Notch. We had a phenomenal debut last week <laughs> of our new campaign, Broncolo. Thanks very much in part to all of you for your oh. incredible support as well as yeah. just being there and enjoying the ride with us. Um, we're ready to dive in again now that we've gotten through the cusp and into the town of Broncolo itself. Ready to poke around, see what the town has to offer, maybe um, uncover a little bit more about what's going on and why the uh, town pillars have been summoned to a meeting. But, uh, I don't really care. <laughs> nah. yeah, it's not, it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> but if you want to tell me, you can. But yeah. I don't care. <laughs> um, we'll be picking up right where we left off at the hotel, which uh, seemed to be on the verge of getting some information from the hotelier. Oh, yeah. But before we dive into that, should we do the usual stuff? stuff. We got like, stuff. Uh, just a little reminder that it's September right now. Ooh. <laughs> yes, sir. Already, I've seen uh, 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 subbing. Uh, uh, it's very easy to sub with uh, uh, Prime if you have that. Thanks for those. What September? Um, it's thirty percent. Thirty percent off, or subs. more if you do multiple months. Wow. Oh, so, uh, I, 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 I subbed to you for like three months and it was like 11 bucks. You subbed so, There's a lot of months. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Um, you know, we only sub to you when it's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> low, sitting on the couch, make sure you don't do it on your iPhone. You yeah, gotta low. go to a desktop because you don't get oh, September. Oh, you don't get September on your phone? Oh, no. It's no, it's it goes also to like, like the app a, store. It's an extra something. dollar. Yeah, yeah, it's off. Yeah, do it on a desktop or a laptop. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining us here on Twitch on Sunday. There is a way to listen to it on Tuesday in podcast form in all the podcast places. On Tuesday, patrons will get a link to the YouTube video. Uh, otherwise, it'll go live for everybody else. Thank you. On Friday, I'm trying to not count off the meaningless digits, and I have to do something else. Um, so Friday, it will go live for everybody on YouTube. Thank you. Um, you may have found us through social media. We're on all of them at Tabletop Notch. Uh, there's always little uh, silly clips and behind the scenes things and uh, ways to interact with us and uh, talk about the show. Um, the best place to do that though is Discord, mm -hmm. where there is a robust oh, uh, uh, server yeah, with there many was, there, there was quite a surge of uh, yeah, new- Yeah, yeah, welcome all the new folks. Think, yes, many new uh, patrons. When, if, you, if you link your Discord with with your uh, um, Twitch or your Discord, Twitch or your Patreon, you'll automatically get made uh, those roles uh, when you show up. Yeah. And then and you did claim those roles. Claim those roles. <laughs> cool. um, <laughs> some really cool stuff on there recently. There was some pixel art from, oh, uh, uh, yeah. from our oh, uh, first gosh. campaign uh, uh, that was really oh, awesome. So uh, Poco Dogo with some really oh amazing <laughs> printouts. I won't, I won't even get into it. Just go and look <laughs> oh, at it on the Discord. It's so in the, I believe Can't be it's in the fan art. It's to be seen. Amazing. In the fan, fan art, art of channel. Brunkolo. Yes, yeah. in the fan art of Brunkolo. Yeah. So go check that out. Um, yeah, fun. join us there to talk about the most recent episode uh, right after it and throughout the week. Uh, we check in and, and say hi and thank you there. So. One of the new things that we've also started doing is uh, for patrons, actually for everybody, but it's hosted on our Patreon, are the recaps of the episodes. We'll do like cute little recaps of every episode. There's also within that uh, video of the recap, there's a link to the fandom uh, recap as well, which is written out. So if anybody is like a non-native English speaker or hearing impaired, you can go ahead and just read the recap as well to assist you. The fandom awesome. community is incredible. They're doing the such oh a good God. job. Yeah. Um, yeah. And fandom it, for reference, Discord for discussion. Yeah. I'd say because there is so much going on over the fandom. That's like where the FAQs and lots of, of backup stuff is. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and then our Patreon has also got a bunch of like homebrew elements. This 
thick little binder, mm -hmm. baby. We sort of, uh, Show that thick binder. We did the, uh, yeah, we did the... <laughs> <laughs> We sort of wow. did the wrap on on season one's sort of uh, homebrew or campaign one's kind of homebrew, wow. um, all kinds of stuff though, not necessarily related specifically to the campaign. Uh, and then as we go, it's already coming time in this month. Um, there'll be sort of a, a new wave of homebrew and, and Patreon stuff uh, now that we're in Brunk Hollow. So look forward to that. But lots of good Brunk stuff. Hollow. Brunk Hollow. Brunk um. Hollow. I know that nothing could possibly outdo the pug shirts that Deirdre and I are getting compliments on at chat, but we also have merch! <laughs> <laughs> are you actually, or did you just say that? Are we getting merch? No, we're getting love. No. Oh, oh God. Thank you, chat. They're like, yeah. cancel like, the stream. <laughs> pug compliments, the pug compliments in the chat. Uh, we have a little merch shop that's got cute little accessories, t-shirts, journals, all good stuff, pans, all kinds of delightful goodies. Yes, mugs, all good mm -hmm. fun it's stuff. Good. Um, and I think that's all? Is there anything you wanted to add, Matthew? I, I think we covered it. I think that's the good stuff. Um, we'll just say before we cut to it, um, it we, our recaps are pre-recorded now. Um, we'll, we'll, the, the order's a little different. We used to go intro recap. We're gonna be doing recap intro, so sorry if that throws everybody off, but that's how we're gonna roll. But before we go to that, would you like to uh, give us a little rundown? Oh, yeah, thank you. I, and I'll do my I, usual. Getting. Okay, Tip of here the we go. Give me Ooh. one. So that can, <laughs> <laughs> we show thanks in a very yeah. funny way here at Tabletop Cheers Notch. Okay, you. let me rewind. So here we go. Captain Coral resubscribed. Peach Rings resubscribed. Detective Wyvern resubscribed. Sunken Train resubscribed. Annabella Rue resubscribed. Earth Mage resubscribed. Serious Gaming resubscribed. Jay Brownie did a thousand bits. Thank you. Wiz Renan gave a community sub. Thank you. Ali Slayer gifted a sub as well. Mr. Jingleheimer, a thousand bits. Light Fighter <laughs> NCO resubscribed. Cave Canum subscribed. Hello and welcome. Hey, Golden Dagger, 510 bits. England in a Resubscribe, Trash Possum. <laughs> yeah. Subscribe, Trash Possum. Jim McKay, uh, uh cheered 400 bits. Wild Me Popsicle, resubscribe. Donosaurus, nice. Oh, 4,000 bits. Thank you so oh, much, you guys. Um, wow. Cheesy Pizza, I'm almost done. Mojo Man gave out a sub. <clears throat> I'm not even gonna try with this one. SC times Captain Twi Twiddles. Subscribe, hello, nice. welcome. You tried. Crushed gave it. A, a thousand bits. Uh, Shades Thank of Blue, resubscribe, and GF Powers, resubscribe. Thank you guys so Thank much. Guys. I can't. Yeah. Oh, I didn't pour it. Uh, you thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Um, I was the, previously she is. To the new people, welcome and thank you. To mm. the uh, resubscribing people, thank you so much. Uh. A pleasure to have you. And <laughs> I believe that is going to take us to the recap. And then we will begin uh, with chapter two of Brunk Hollow and see what this group of sightseers is up to. <laughs> Um, We're just tourists. <laughs> just miserable, <laughs> miserable. Look around. For Got 30 a little camera. Of tourism. <laughs> Shall we? Shall All right, everybody. We're going to go over to the recap, and then we're going to go right into the intro, and then we'll kick it off. Here we go. <laughs> Previously on Bronk Hollow. Three wagons set out from the village of Malai, hoping to reach Brunk Hollow Valley by mid-afternoon. With Baker Macklin leading the caravan, travel was unhindered until noted road agent Horton Boyd stopped them in their tracks, looking to loot the belongings of a half-orc man named Gujek. Opinions were mixed over whether to intervene, but Ilian Tyrone broke the stalemate when he charged forth from his carriage, starting a scrap that would quickly turn into a bloody brawl. Despite the violence, the altercation was short-lived because a greater threat was about to emerge, a cleric coming to dispense justice in the cusp. One wagon was smashed to smithereens, but the other two narrowly escaped and made their way across the Little Hook River, where finally the passengers could breathe easy in our town of no gods. Something was afoot, however, at the time of their arrival, for the pillars of the camp were meeting to discuss something they found at the dig site. What was this worrisome discovery? And would the supposed sightseers get caught up in the fuss? Stick around and find out on chapter two of Broncolo.
Reporting by Bernard. Yes. With glasses lined up across the front desk, and five expectant faces waiting for further explanation from a man who's almost swimming in his overcoat. More people begin to shuffle in and out through the front door from the thoroughfare, an apparent end to whatever brief business hiatus gripped the town on your arrival. Let's talk about the mines, he said, presumably a precursor to gleaning some small piece of the information that Morna already acquired from her new associate by the creek. Just as it seems he's about to elucidate, the man's eyes dart toward the main entrance, where an elf in a fitted frock coat and dark green derby cap has just stepped inside. The man's head is angled down and his hands are linked behind his back as if he's been pacing in contemplation. But enough of his skin is visible to see its pale blue hue. And when he looks up toward the desk, there's a moment of eye contact between him and the man that you were just speaking to before the elf motions with his hand, prompting the other man to bow politely and retreat toward the modest kitchen on the opposite side of the lobby. The elf approaches and takes his sort of spot opposite the desk, looks at the five kind of glass, six glasses, including his own that are lined up there on the desk. I am glad that you had occasion to be introduced to Mr. Warren, and he motions to the man that you were just speaking to. If you wish to be situated with a meal, a room, or directions to any particular part of town, you will find he is equal to the task. Other more specific inquiries might be directed toward me. I've no doubt that Mr. Warren stated or at least implied his ownership of this hotel, and while that is perhaps technically accurate, it's a bit like saying you own the ocean because you scooped up a glass of water by the beach. My name is Bassett Clements, and I am the majority proprietor of Paramount Lodgings. May I uh, pour you a drink to welcome you and congratulate you on your journey? They're still free. Certainly. Thank you. He takes the bottle, runs it across the desk there, pouring as he goes. Okay, well, I was down, was it down? Drops, 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 drops. A new brew for you, sir. <laughs> oh, thank you. A man who owns and runs and operates a hotel is always happy to see flea bags, even when others are not. Cheers on your journey. Cheers. 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 Mr. Warren and I began as equal partners, an arrangement that suited us well until certain formal gambling operations were underway in the camp. Some have a weakness for spirits, others for tobacco, and some otherwise dependable sorts find themselves repeatedly back at cards. When Mr. Warren's cold streaks would bring him around seeking yet another loan, I began to protect myself by requiring ownership percentages as collateral. I believe his stake currently sits at 4.5%, so I hope you understand it is not with hubris that I say I am in charge of this hotel. And you came about that by gambling? I did not, sir. Mr. Warren has a gambling problem, and he would come to me asking for more money when he had money problems of his own. Is there some other place that you are a full proprietor of, and you gained this as a secondary? No, Mr. Warren and I went into business with each other originally back when the camp's inception. I see. 50-50 at that point, you see. Ah. Did you also enter Brunk Hollow together? We did, yeah. <laughs> and you all, can I inquire as to uh, where you are coming from? Well, um, we came from... Uh, We're from Paran. Paran. Many people are. It's a big place. Congratulations on making it here live. I heard there was a, a bit of a disturbance in the cusp. Oh, it's nothing much. Nothing we're not used to. All right then. Steezy <laughs> looks very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so does Morna. <laughs> I would say that uh, 
he seems su surprised as well, although he's hiding it maybe a little better than uh, Easy and Morna. <laughs> <laughs> but Morna's Bassett no raises problem. an eyebrow. Is that, that seems to sort of come as new information to him. You said there are folks who might not be so happy to see flea bags in town? Is it getting a little crowded or? <laughs> Broncalo is a small town. I think it depends on what your line of business is. Some people are afraid that you might encroach on what is previously exclusively theirs. You're not here to open a hotel, are you? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> no, we're just here for sightseeing. I'm sure you are. I'm uh, I sure am not. I, I, I'm a stonemason. Oh. Camp could use one of those. I don't believe we have a proper stonemason. Some people dabble in that line of work who also work in the mine. Is, uh, I heard a Kennedy girl. She has a timber claim. That's right, Josie. Josie. Yes. That's she what does. I heard. You probably passed it on your way in. The timber lease is uh, just across from the boarding house. Okay. We were girls together. Would she be happy to see you? It's been a long time. I can't imagine she wouldn't. Nice to meet an old friend then. Here's to hoping. <laughs> I always thought flea bags was a misappropriated term. When people flee for their lives, they often neglect to pack their bags at all, speaking from experience. May I be so bold as to ask for your intentions in the camp now that you've told me where you're from? Uh, we have a stonemason. I don't know if that's your planned line of work, but here as uh, miners, most are prospectors. We heard the mining tunnels could use some protection creatures out there wondering about. Bison is known to hire security for his mines. They butt heads with the clinkers at the prison every once in a while, so it never hurts to have another armed person by your side. Are there uh, locations right up against one another? There are various claims through the upwheeled and the downwheeled. Those are two terms that you've heard in passing before. The upwheeled and the downwheeled are... <laughs> <laughs> the surrounding sort of thick forests and hills around Broncalo. The closer portion is the downwheeled, and then as you get higher up in elevation, that's the upwheeled. So a lot of the mines are in either the downwheeled or the upwheeled. And wait, so just so I'm understanding, mm -hmm. so that's in reference to like literally like the forest itself or just how it, it translates to the mining claim? Um, that's the forest, that's the area itself. Okay. Around okay. Broncalo is the downwheeled and then as you get even further up into the mountains, you start to get into the upwheeled. Which, Got it. And it, it's not necessarily true, but it tends to get more dangerous as you get further up into the upwheeled, just in terms of the creatures that exist there because people have been living there for less time. So the creatures have kind of, uh, yeah, the further you get away from Broncalo, the more dangerous it can be. Hmm. So, let me get it straight. The clinkers and bison's men, they are the ones that butt heads the most. They don't do... I would say that would be an accurate assessment, yes. They both uh, are here to garner what they can from the mines, and sometimes there are disputes over who does and does not have claim to certain areas. I see. Bison's the only one with the muscle to back up any kind of dispute with the clinkers, so if you're on your own, you might have to yield to their superior forces. Hmm. Well, I suppose we'll have to find Bison, I think it is, and talk to him. Bison's already got muscle. He does. Who is it? It's more than one. <laughs> uh, do they go by a certain group name or anything, or just hired hands? No, just Bison's, I think. Right. Say that you work for Bison carries a certain prestige in Broncalo. I see. Hmm. Yeah. So these prison employees, uh, a well-respected but maybe not well-loved group by the rest of the camp. Perhaps you could clarify for me. Well, in my coming to Broncalo, I understood that there's always work at the prison, but if I'm going to be looked at as some kind of bully. I, I don't know if I'd like to associate myself with them. I would urge caution for you, Mr. Welker. Mr. Welker. Uh, working for the prison is not necessarily a sentence to be disparaged among those in Broncalo, but 
there are those, like Bison himself, who might turn their nose up at a man who goes to work for the prison. Good to know. A bit of friendly advice on the house. Uh, another round, everyone? Please. I don't mind. <laughs> Once again, he pours across the desk. Still free. Cheers. Where is the half orc at this point? Um, he has, he looks like uh, Mr. Warren, who was the first person you spoke to, mm -hmm. seems to be helping him with his luggage uh -huh. up the stairs. Okay. Uh. So he's already in the process of sort of finding a room for his cell. Got it. Uh, and um, do these count as uh, full drinks in the sense that uh, <laughs> our constitution might become. Uh, this campaign's gonna be a little more lenient. Oh. Uh, first of all, the, the, the liquor might be. <laughs> We're all Watered down, not watered down, but less strong than like a modern okay. liquor would. So you can you can have a number of drinks without it uh, being an issue. I'll let you know if we approach yeah. that point. <laughs> You're like, and I'm like, that one makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. 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 And uh, speaking of security, I'm in charge with uh, making sure this man's bags get all the way up safely. So if you don't mind, I'm going to depart from our conversation. Alien, I'll see you. In a moment. In a minute. Not a problem. Uh, would you mind if I regale the rest with a, a bit of a proposition? No. In your absence. Uh, El. I'll keep you informed. Cheers. And uh, let me know if you find somebody else who speaks Orcish. Uh, yeah, definitely. Though I suppose Mr. Warren would. All right. Mr. Warren's. Uh, you walked away. At yeah, this yeah. Point. Uh, Mr. Warren's enthusiasm for rounding you all up is unquestionably tied to the meeting that we've just ended at POD. We have been sworn to some degree of confidentiality, so details are in short supply. But at this conference's conclusion, we, me and Mr. Warren, volunteered to assist in recruitment of sorts. We are to find some willing participants for a job, a, a task that Flea bags are perhaps uniquely suited to, hence Mr. Warren's sudden and, and passionate approach. Would you like to set your things down and have a clean and tidy room first, or shall I proceed with the pitch? I wouldn't mind hearing what you have to say. Regale us. I have been made, as we have had some matter to discuss at this point to understand that there is a point of contention at one of Bison's dig sites. Bison goes by that name, however, his true name is Bryson Stott. <laughs> he has a stage name. I suppose you could call it that. If you're ever in his presence, I wouldn't comment on the name or where it comes from. Hmm. Noted. I think when you meet him, it will be obvious where the nickname originated. Okay. A bullheaded sword. Something like that. They take with them, these mining companies, uh, a litany of instruments for measuring the boundaries of their property lines when they are feuding with the clinkers and their own mining claims. They'll be going back up this afternoon to take a look at the deposit that they have unearthed, but this particular dig site happens to lie right on land that is contested between Bison and Fort Contrition, which is the prison. It is Bison's estimation that despite the pretense of civility, the clinkers may bring added muscle to strengthen their position of negotiation. Apparently, this dig has proved out, and then some, for it to be worth the trouble of dispute for both parties. Bison would like a few individuals strategically placed along the ridge who can whistle for his attention if they spot reinforcements making their way to the dig. Ideally, these, these uh, individuals would be faces not yet known to the clinkers, so if they're seen ambling through the woods, it does not arouse their suspicion and therefore escalate the conflict. Mm. Now, nobody, myself included, wants to embroil you in business that is not your own, so you're not to get close to the dig site, nor are you expected to intervene uh, if the event of a skirmish breaks out. The whistle is a dog whistle, 
so the sound does not implicate you as its origin. Bison will not hear it, but the hounds he has with him will. Mm. It's 20 gold per person for a couple of hours doing nothing more than sitting patiently by. And that's as good a deal as they come. Mr. Warren and I would have taken the jobs ourselves if we were not such obvious fixtures of the camp. If you're already a moneyed individual and therefore do not need the coin, it doesn't hurt your long-term prospects in the camp to take the opportunity to endear yourselves to Bison, but you'll get no hard sell from me. M Mr. Clemens, is it? Yes. Now, Brunk Hollow has no mayor, no sheriff, nothing like that. Would you say Mr. Bryson is the closest there is to a leader here? I would say that there are some in the camp that people look to for leadership, Bison among them. Uh, I think that Ms. Narvos would also fall into that category. And, and who is she? Well, Izzy runs the mail house. You would have passed that as well on your way in. How often do these negotiations between the clinkers and the uh, bison's folk come to blows, or dare I say blood? I would say very rarely. The dig would have to be a particularly lucrative find for them to think that shedding blood was worth the effort. But it does happen. It has happened before, yes. How many times would you say? <laughs> You'd have to ask Bison himself for an exact number. I would estimate maybe three or four times oh. since I've been here. Sometimes small-scale conflicts, uh, shovings, pushings, bloody blows, and on occasion, a couple of people have died. Oh my goodness. Does the thought of blood worry you, Mr. Welker? No, I just like to be prepared for whatever might happen. As I said, you are not expected in any way to intervene in these negotiations, however bloody they may become. Do you like to be able to defend myself? Though? Of course. Mr. Welker also rather enjoys smelling nice and feeling soft and pretty. Um, should when I we... walked by him, I noted his Strong odor. odor. <laughs> should we engage, um, and should Mr. Welker want to freshen up later, is there a spot in town where there are poultices or potions one might use? You're looking for the use of potions to clean yourself? <laughs> I've heard of stranger things here in Brunkala. If you're inquiring about the use of alchemy, you need not be so furtive as one would have to be in one of the capital <laughs> cities. Nice. We have two people in town that might have something that you're looking for, for cleanliness or otherwise. One of them goes by Maeve Crittenden. She lives in the water mill down by the river. And then the other would be our lovely local doctor, Dr. Graham Blaylock. He's at the Little Hook Apothecary. And for your guys' map purposes, mm -hmm. I'll even bring that up. Oh. Hey. Love it. Graham Blaylock? Graham Blaylock. Blaylock. Yep. Graham Blaylock. Dr. Blaylock. <laughs> Let's bring up Doc the Lock. map there. Graham. Um, the water mill is number four there, IV. The water mill by the river, just by the bridge. Uh, sorry. Does it have oh, a proper name or is it? Just Maeve's, yep. Maeve. It's just Maeve's house or home. Like her. He did not indicate a, a name of the business or anything. And then this one, number nine, mm -hmm. IX up here is uh, the Little Hook Apothecary. That's Dr. Graham Blaylock. It, little Hook Apothecary? The Little Hook Apothecary. That, that A river there is the Little Hook yeah. River, yeah. So he's the Little Hook Apothecary. Cool. Amazing. And a general store? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. No. laughs> is there a bodega? <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> <Not Napa. laughs> I will return to the right. Information dump? Yeah. <laughs> what is it exactly you're looking to find? Simple sundries, prospecting tools? Uh, actually, again, just for my own defense, uh, small ammunition. Hmm. Or... I believe uh, most of that you can find at Good as Gold, uh -huh. which is run by the Sampson Brothers. And that is number 13. Which is that old? I'm sorry. 
Good as gold is the name of the place. Uh, you don't know this yet, Jordan. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just gonna, uh, saving my so I my trusty brother will report everything to me. Uh, I bet. Run, yeah, oh. <laughs> will you Wait, run by the who brother? It? <laughs> the Samson brothers. <laughs> uh, thirteen. Yeah, number thirteen. Oh, right next to that lucky heathen. Yeah. Uh, that is not the lucky heathen. Oh, lucky heathen uh, <laughs> is number eleven. Damn it, I had it as twelve. Okay. Yeah. Eleven. Heathen. Uh, Good as gold. Fudge. All right. We'll fix this later. Check that. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Eleven is the lucky. Where the hell is eleven? Oh, I see. I see. I see. It's uh, across. It's the on the main red strip red. there. Red, red roof on the main strip. Oh yeah. Heathen and good as gold is thirteen. Thirteen. Good, good as gold. And, uh, and, and the brothers. The Samson. Brothers Samson. <laughs> Brother Sam. Yeah. Other than the potions and the general stores or anywhere else I might direct you. I would also say, uh, in a self-serving manner, um, if you're looking for a place to stay and have not already found accommodations, I cordially invite you to stay here at this hotel. Hmm. Seems cozy. Might we inquire about the race? Modest price, six silver per night. That comes with breakfast in the morning. Ooh, continental. Seems reasonable. Quiet. We have rooms available. Um, single rooms, double rooms, quadruple rooms. <laughs> I would take a single room. Very well. I Six would, silver. For I would do the same. Six um, silver as well. Now, this uh, project that you brought up, where might and when might we report for duty were we to take this on. If you are indeed interested, excavation on demand is the large brown roofed building south of here, just before you reach the bridge. And I won't bring the map up one more time, but it's number five there. It's a really big, it's the biggest building. In gotcha. Uh, is one of Bison's associates will be waiting outside at 5 p.m. with further instruction for anyone who wishes to join. And because we are new in town, Yes. There's no danger of our working to get back to the clinkers. I would Perhaps think not. Perhaps us to be marked. Clinkers haven't seemed to take an issue with people coming to Brunkhollow to work. I would say unless you engage in some activity that they take offense in particular, you're probably all right. As I said, you are meant to stay very far away from the dig site itself, so if you are spotted and someone asks you what your business is, um, well, you're free to lie, I suppose. Or tell the truth, that's up to you. The clinkers, other than obviously at the prison, uh, do they have some sort of office nearby that we perhaps shouldn't run our mouths as we walk past? <laughs> In town, the clinkers do not have any formal representation. They come to Broncolo, but if you wish to speak with someone of importance at the prison, you'll have to take the walk yourself. It's about 20 to 30 minutes on foot. Easily recognizable, say, at a local watering hole that I might recognize a clinker? If they're in their work uniforms, I would say so. <laughs> Gray with green badges, although many of them will shed said uniform before they come to town. Not for fear of their safety, simply as a uh, off working hours kind of endorsement. Well, as my sister said, uh, we are here to see what the protection situation is, so I'd gladly help you out with this problem. I'm sure she would as well. I would think for someone interested in the business of security, that would be a good way to get your foot in the proverbial door. Wonderful. Oh, well, then you can expect me to be there. Very well. Is it with you that I can secure a room, or? It is, yes, of course. If I could just have a double room for my sister and I? The upcharge is up to eight silver instead of That's six for the double. That's fine, I can uh, do that. And I hand over a gold or eight silver, whatever. Sure, yeah. he can give you change. Yeah. What, uh, sorry, Matt, how mm -hmm. many silver does a gold make? It's tens all the way. 10 <laughs> copper is a silver, 10 silver is a gold, 10 gold is a, is a platinum. And okay. That's for a single night, uh, or a couple days, uh, That's for a single night single with night. food included, yes. Okay, perfect, thank you very much. Of course. Prices are a little more expensive than one might expect, but then again, it is Broncolo. The market demand, yeah. 
Mr. Welke here understands. <laughs> Is there anything else I can help you with before I uh, see to the kitchen, which could use my assistance, it seems? Oh, um, I'll take a single room as well. Very well. Thank you. Uh, where are we to nosh? Um, maybe at the Lucky Heathen, if we wanted to fight before this? We have a small kitchen here, as you can see. Modest in its adornments. If you're looking for something more substantial, I recommend the Main Street Chop House, which is just across the way. He literally points out the door. It's number uh, six there, which is literally just across the street from the hotel. Thanks so much. Plenty of, the, plenty of seating, plenty of food. Busy probably at this hour, but to be expected. Mm. I should have something other than rations. <clears throat> I understand. I traveled a bit on my own, and the comfort of a good meal makes for the end of a journey quite comfortable. As Mr. Warren had put it, uh, many important people were at this site earlier, and I just suppose if there's anyone else I should know that is important in this town, such as yourself. Mr. Warren said that everyone of importance was at this meeting. <laughs> uh, I'm paraphrasing, but something of that sort. I imagine you'll get to know the people that are of importance as you stay. Fair enough. Thank you for your help. Thank you kindly, Mr. Clements. Enjoy your stay, enjoy your rooms. And he does take like keys that he slides across the table. Gives a little nod. He starts to walk over towards the kitchen there. He's picking up dishes that have been left behind on tables. So he's in the area, so he didn't disappear, but he's around. Four of you are here. And I'd forgotten if you had said, but this thing to go be a whistleblower, that's tonight? At 5, 5 p.m. So you guys have a couple hours, yeah. or like a few hours before okay. you're, you're set to report. Okay. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I am down to blow some whistles to get in with this bison man who might be half a bison. I'm kind of freaked out by that. I, I, well, which I one were we not said. supposed to refer to him by? Was it not Bryson or? with the R. We, yes. Yeah. I, I, it goes by bison. But he's got You'd a bit of an that ego. Would be the more I'm sure offensive he's... thing to call someone. Well, not if he's like trying it. to build a mythology around himself. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you really think he is part bison? <laughs> because I don't. I'm seeing it in my head. He is part bison. I suppose I haven't taken him all in quite yet. So we will find out at five. And that will be exciting Ooh, to I... see what that is all about. I hope he's there. To, to clarify also what was said, it's not that you can't call him Bison or Bryson. It's, he said, don't ask about why. Oh, why, okay, 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 why he okay. has that nickname. Okay. Okay. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was on me. <laughs> <laughs> why does he hate his name? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys take a look around and now past the sort of tending to Gujek's luggage, which we will pivot to in a moment, you do have a moment to kind of get your bearings on the interior of the lodgings here. Opposite from the front desk, and behind the front desk there's about like 20 cubby holes that are for mail and thing. Each of them has like a room number on them, so if you were to get a letter, it could be brought directly here to the hotel. In addition to that, there's the staircase on the opposite side leading to the upper floors, and just like the impression that you got from the outside, the sprawling ornate base of the staircase with its intricately carved banisters quickly gives way to nothing more than sanded wooden planks as you ascend past the first steps or so. So once again, that impression that they really put in everything they had to the lower <laughs> floors and kind of as you, it, it's not shoddy or falling apart. It's just simple. The, the wood is unstained. It's, it's not carved. It's not intricate in any way. Other than that, there is the kitchen that has a decent amount of seating. And it feels like something is a, of a last resort for hungry patrons. Like the meals <laughs> that they're eating are very simple, sort of meager vittles. And there's a few sectioned off booths with sliding doors that seem to be maybe the hotel's attempt at making this an establishment where people of importance could conduct their business in private. This you have no like reason to believe it. Yes, it's, okay. in, it's in there. There's like a couple sectioned off little rooms. They're currently all open. All of the sliding doors are open. You can see the booth. So nobody is currently meeting as far as you can TC tell. TC does a couple like, <laughs> check them all. What's up with that Nobody inside. <laughs> You're not sure if the place has reached the level of prestige that its owners so obviously desire. But you have to admit, it does have a terrific view of the main thoroughfare. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect juncture to kind of sit and watch the spirited haggling at the market, 
a clear view of the roads leading both in and out of town. And it's a spot to admire the surrounding hills of Brunk Hollow Valley that sort of come up over the rooftops in a raised horizon. So as you look out the front door, you can see that if nothing else, this was a well-chosen spot for the hotel. It has a beautiful view, very central to the activities of the town, and very much pride has been taken in making this a, a hub here in Brunk Hollow. Do we know what our room number is? Uh, he gave you a bunch in a row. We'll say you're seven, eight, and nine there. Mm. Seven, eight, and nine. I'll take seven. Oh, and yeah. we'll, sorry, was there I a call four? nine. We'll, yeah, say, I we'll say six through nine. Six, seven, eight, nine. I'll take six then. <laughs> well, I guess I'm So double, I guess I'm... So maybe six is the double. <laughs> sure, <laughs> six right. is the double, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm eight. It's I'm nine. <laughs> this is so. important. This is the most important thing. <laughs> wait, so, um, wait, so I'm in between oh, six, Jesus. which is the double, and eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Got my cup to the door. <laughs> well, uh, so you all sound like you're meeting up at five as well. With meet the spies in. Seems to be a wise choice. Yeah. Only to ingratiate ourselves with the top brass. And we can probably see many sights on the way, which is exciting. And Boy. what we're all here for. I'm, I'm sorry, are you all really sightseeing? Oh. Uh, protective sightseer. Is. Looking for yeah to protect sightseers. Is it not a dangerous and difficult place to sightsee, full of villains and rogues? Is there villains? A lot of villains here. Seems everyone so far has been quite friendly. Quite nice. Uh, Just as he says that, like passing by the front door, is like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> somebody shot somebody and they <laughs> fall in the mud a little bit. <laughs> Seems like a grand place. Let's say the death and destruction that welcomed us here, as well as the tales of blood between factions. Yeah, I'd say it's a little <laughs> bit of a, a rough and tumble place for sightseeing. I'm sorry, did you really come here and not understand the reputation of this town? I do, it just it feels like home. Home feels nice. Morna's gonna <laughs> just sort of take that in. So, I'm gonna go get my room squared away and then perhaps we can all get to know each other a bit better over food or something. I'll probably stop by the general store on my way to get a bite, if anybody headed that way. I could uh, use a rest and nurse my wounds. Right. I am burned badly. Oh. You look a bit singed, yes. <laughs> as well, myself as, as well. As do you, sir. <laughs> so, um, four to eat, or? Oh, I'm gonna go square away my stuff. I'll be back down in a half hour, I'd say. Half hour? Yeah. All right, we'll see you in a half hour in, in the hour. log. Yes. Lovely enough? to make all of your acquaintances, by the way. Lovely. <laughs> an hour for, for sure. I will be an hour. <laughs> <laughs> exactly one hour. An hour. Okay, we'll wait, an, I'll, I'll wait hour. an hour so we can all eat together and <laughs> right? get to know each other. An hour. We're an gonna, hour for friendship. We're going to pivot and go back in time a little bit and just follow uh, where Doxy was headed after she sort of departed from the conversation. So the bags were being taken by both. So both Gujek and Mr. Warren seem to be shuffling in sort of shifts up to this up the staircase his his various sundries and luggage that he was carrying. So. Okay, are there still some bags left though? I uh, there were yes. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um if I don't care if Gucek's there, but for when Warren has returned to do like another round of are they like you know, firemanning packages up? Is that what's happening? No, they, they the the two of them each took a package, took it up, oh, and okay. both came back down. Great. And we'll say they just both grabbed a couple more things and now they're headed back up the stairs. Great. I'll stop Mr. Warren. Uh Mr. Warren. Yes. I appreciate your hospitality, but I've actually been tasked with ensuring that this gentleman's bags get upstairs successfully without any hindering. So if you don't mind, um, I'm relieving you of your duties and I'm going to assist him. He turns to face Gujek, and Gujek, who's like at the top of the staircase carrying. <laughs> I'm helping you upstairs. Great. <laughs> so I'll take the packages from Warren. As soon as you reach them, uh, give me a persuasion check. <laughs> Come on, man. First of all. Yeah. Remember me. Three. <laughs> and he points to the landing, not his room. <laughs> you want me to stay and babysit? <laughs> Points to the package. Mm -hmm. To the landing. 
All right. And he takes, his room is like just up the stairs to the left. Okay. The door is to it is open. So he disappears inside there. You can hear like a, put something down, slides it. And then he comes back out to the landing. So he, he now is sort of implying the sort of fireman as sort of back and forth there. I will do that okay. until the last package. Okay. So, so I will obey his wishes. <clears throat> takes another group in. For the last package, oh. I'm gonna double time it quietly to get the package and I'm going all the way up and into his room. And into his room, okay. So you Sheesh. hear him put the, the second to last, you know, piece of luggage down. And as he turns around, he's sort of clapping his hands together. And Doxley's going to <laughs> shut the door. Oh my. No. Here's the thing I can feature, Gujak. He reaches into his pocket and like takes out a gold. Oh, don't hurt him. Parton is not the first road agent I've come across. I've worked security like that before. And those people don't lie. And he seemed to be under the impression that you speak common and can understand me. So how about you come clean so that we can have a proper discussion? Make an intimidation. Oh. Ooh. Okay. 16. 16. Some common. Can you understand me? since I've walked in here. Mostly. All right then. You're safe that stays with me. So, what I was hoping to discuss with you is fostering a relationship with you. You've no doubt have some quite expensive things here, whether it's to open up a shop or just deal directly out of air. I don't care. No shop. This is all for you? No. Again, I don't care what you do with it, but I can guarantee you that Horton is not the first and only problem you're ever gonna have. So, I'd like to put my name in the hat to be the first to be considered as your protection. What do you want? Gold. High praises. My high praises mean very little in Broncolo. Well, you're just getting started, aren't you? I'm sure you'll have quite a reputation soon. Mm. Kind of looks toward the frame of the door there. Pleasure doing business with you. I'm gonna put the trunk or whatever I'm holding down. Mm -hmm. I'll see you around Broncolo. What's your name? Doxley Tyrone. Doxley. Okay. Secret stay with me, go check. Enjoy your day. I'll turn around. The door. As you're sort of exiting out the door, you just hear like a as he kind of sits down. Oh. Close the door behind me. Scared him. <laughs> so about at the same time as um, as Clemens finishing up his uh, uh, Bassett Clemens finishing up his conversation is sort of when you emerge. Okay. Um, so you're at the top of the staircase and now watching them kind of disperse, heading in different directions. Doc, I've got yeah. rooms secured. Uh, Thank you. I will show you to room number six. It's right this way. An excellent number, Doc. It's, it's, it's a good room. Great. So now that you've been up the staircase a little bit, uh, there's a second and third floor, 
and it looks like each floor has six rooms. So one through six is on the second floor, and seven through 12 is on the third floor. Damn it. Oh. oh, so we share the floor with Gojek, and, and they- Yes. Gojek, Gojek? Gojek. Gojek. Yep, and Gojek nice. was, we'll call it room three, was Gojek was in. Okay. Nice. Damn it. Six is pretty good. Not in between two rooms. <laughs> so yeah, one through six on floor two, uh, seven through 12 on floor three. I'm gonna head up to room nine sure. on the third floor. Sure. And um, I'm gonna, can I use my healing surge before I take a short rest? You can, yep. I'm gonna You may do so. Do that. Uh, that we do optional healing surge rules for this campaign as it is a uh, relatively low magic campaign void of, of clerics. Joking. Please do so. <laughs> um, so you're able to roll as many hit dice as you want. You can roll them one at a time. Uh, you do you have the healing surge card? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read that. Just for it was the cool. first time we've done it on the on the stream. So go ahead and read that. A bon as a bonus action, a character can use a healing surge and spend up to half his or her hit dice. For each hit dice spent in this way, the player rolls the die and adds the character's constitution modifier. The character regains hit points equal to the total. The player can decide to spend an additional hit die after each roll. A character who uses a healing surge can't do so again until he or she finishes a short or long rest. Under this optional rule, a character regains all spent hit dice at the end of a long rest. With a short rest, a character regains hit dice equal to his or her level divided by four, minimum of one dice. It's a little mathy. What it means for us right now at level three is you can only use one hit die because you can only use half and it's rounded down, but then you get one back during a short rest. So you will immediately get it back after concluding your short rest. So you can roll your hit die, which for you is a D8, right, as a monk. I think it's on there. Um, and then add your constitution modifier to that. But we can only use one. Yes, because we're at level three. You can use half of your level, and it's at level three, it's only one. Wow. I... And add your constitution modifier to that as well. Uh, you can still do short rest healing as well. I, and I shall. <laughs> so, ten. ten, you regain that many hit points. Okay. And if, Jesus. <laughs> effectively, you can use it take the rest and use as many of your hit dice as you want. Yes, you can also use hit dice yeah. normally, like yeah. you can on a short okay. rest. Yes, okay. you just. Uh... So, but I do get this one back for the short rest. Yes. Okay, that great. That's also true. Cool. <laughs> Morn is a little squishy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's like slightly confusing She's because the healing surge is technically not using up a hit dice, but it acts the same, right? It is using up a hit die. Well, we get it back because we're resting. Yes. You guys are doing kind of a weird thing where you're yeah. using a healing surge directly before short resting. Before that adding. won't be the most common use of it. Got it. But yes, when you use a healing surge, you use hit dice. S sorry, so for s <laughs> There's no yes. reason to do a healing surge during a short rest, right? No. There's no additional benefit. So you could just do your healing. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm saying. Yes, yeah. I guess yeah. not really, Is that you though. don't get to you can spend hit dice during a short rest anyway, so I yeah. guess you don't need to use the healing. You can, but it doesn't yeah. matter. And for me, someone who did use healing surge like during battle, mm -hmm. I am now down one hit die going into my short rest. Yes. So if I want to use the two that I have left, I only have those two, and then at the end of the rest, I am spent. I don't have any more hit dice, right? Because I'm not going to... You get one back at the conclusion of your short rest. <laughs> so I'll have one, and I could technically use another healing surge between now and a long rest. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm here with you. Got, you. Yeah. All right. you can't heal We're, yourself right now unless you rest. Yes. Because oh. he already used I've already used her. What yes. if we get into some some blood or That's bloody why faction why fighting? Yeah. Why, yes, the, you mentioned. The, the two of you went to the third floor, and TC was about to go out the door, and he's like, <laughs> and goes upstairs as well and lays down for a minute. All right. Uh, so I will also uh, use some hit dice you may. during this rest. And those you can use as many as you want. Uh, you can roll them one at a time. Okay, I get it. I get it now. Um, and for those interested, page 266 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. Ooh. <laughs> Optional rules for uh, healing surges. For If you're running a campaign that's either sort of Low on magic, low on healing, or just sort of wanting to give your um, your group a, a way to heal that isn't a, yeah. sort of a finite source. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, two, six, full. There we go, full. Yes. Uh, Are you the two of you resting? Uh, so I should go up to room six. You may, yeah. Uh, so I got us a nice double room. Seems pretty nice. 
uh, and the door closes and I kind of go into like a family meeting kind of thing, <laughs> you know, whatever. Aww. So, um, what I've learned, uh, everyone that we've met is going to see this, did he say where the area was or what the area was called that we're going to? Or? Not where the dig is located, okay. he did not. We're going to go be whistleblowers uh, for bison. Uh, everyone else that we met is going as well. They'll be paying 20 gold for each thing. Um, one peculiar thing is um, the woman we were traveling with that had an axe head or went um, to the river. Oh, the the war pick? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. She said that maybe she wouldn't want to get into a scuffle with the clinkers because reputation, so if anything broke out, we might not be able to count on her for any sort of anything. That's um, a bummer because she's the only one who's murdered someone in front of our very eyes. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, so she, she seems uh, not to really be counted upon uh, for tonight. Um, right. And I want to keep my eye out for Niall. I believe yeah. tonight would be a great opportunity to maybe find him. Yeah, I mean... I'm I assume not... he probably works with Bison. That sounds like someone who would be in the same sphere. Of... I, yeah, I would imagine. Um... Uh, I told everyone we'd be back down in an hour to get to know each other and all the friendly stuff. Uh, oh, whoa. And then... I appreciate you being that side of the family for me. Yes, I know. It's a little hard for some parts of our family to do that. Um, is there anything that you want to do in the meantime? I mean, we found out there was a store. Um, get anything that you need. I'm okay to just rest. I think I'll be all right to just rest. All right. Uh, I believe that's everything that was covered at the meeting, but... If I remember anything, I'll, I'll let you know. I also pass up, obviously, the names of everyone that I learned. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're going to pass those along. <laughs> um, and I give her so. fake names, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> really make me look stupid. <laughs> okay, uh, in that case, I'm going to take a short rest as well, and then y'all are done. Doxley? Yeah, Doxley's going to, like, sit on her bed as, as we're resting, and... Did you see that, Ill? Did you have vantage over the cleric? Uh, not really. Uh, when I was out of the window and looking back on him, uh, I had a, a bit. He was still quite a ways out, but, uh... The fire just vanished from his hand. Just gone. Broncolo's the real deal. It's not just some made-up story. This is a place where the family business could perhaps thrive. Yeah. Right. That's it. I'll start my rest. Yeah. Okay. Anybody so using any hint time? Yep. yep. Oh, short rest things. Oh, oh God. Oh, yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, I get all of it back. Marshall classes, oh, short rest. Yeah. <laughs> See a <you, He's> wizard. <laughs> Stupid little bitch. Just kidding. Uh, I love days you. I love you. I miss my spells. <laughs> 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 okay. I am rested. Okay. <laughs> Great. But some time passes. Uh, initially, you hear kind of a a modest swell on the on the first floor, just in terms of activity in the midday hour. People looking for a bite to eat. Maybe some people who don't want to deal with the crowds or the waits at the proper chop house come to this kitchen, have a bite to eat. So there's a brief period where it sounds like there's a little more activity downstairs on the floor below. Some chatter and just some laughter, drinking, and then that fades a little bit. So that that meal time sort of period passes and it gets a little quieter again. Some people, you can hear feet shuffling, people exiting out the door. You hear over and over the kind of the doors opening and closing over and over and over again. And a bit of time passes. Does anyone wish to do something during this time that is a, sort of a, just a, an, a, private, an, a, a private moment <laughs> activity? Yes. Uh, Are we uh, done resting? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Whose room is next to mine? The uh, if I'm in seven, you're in eight. I'm in eight, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> TC at, at one point, you know, finds a and just oh. like <laughs> in here. Amazing. Oh, I just dribbled on myself. Um, and oh my does he hear anything? Give me a perception check. Um, Snake. eighteen. <laughs> eighteen. The walls. 
get progressively thinner as you go up in levels. Like mm -hmm. the first floor, yeah. all the walls look mm -hmm. sturdily constructed brick and stone. Then it gets to like thick wooden okay. partitions. And then on the third floor, it's a little, Ooh. it's not shoddy again, okay. but it, it's, they skimped a little bit on the overall construction. Oh, can I give a caveat of first looking for maybe some knots in the wood or if yeah. there's any just seams or... There isn't like holes. You yeah. can't see any light or anything. But does uh, TC hear anything as you're resting in the other Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's talking to her weapons again. Mm. <laughs> just like a quiet conversation with Phil and Barbara. Okay. Um, but it, I hear you conversation. Just a little, yeah. just a little. You don't have to give the exact words, but like, what's the gist of it? What, yeah, what do you, you what do you I'm mutter? Just talking about, you know, everybody needs to stay calm. It's a big day. Don't get crazy. Okay. And then I sing a little bit. Just a hymn that I know. <laughs> sing it. <laughs> Don't make me sing. Don't make me sing. Don't make me she sing. sings a little hymn <laughs> quietly to herself, unable to make out the words. We'll say she sings very kind of quietly. And not well. <laughs> Do I recognize the hymn? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember anyone joining her in there. <laughs> Cool. You go to the other wall and you're yeah. like, oh, that's outside. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. It's very loud. It's very loud. <laughs> Pile crates to get to the ceiling. <laughs> Nobody on the roof. Yeah. Damn. Oh, right. I'm in the floor. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. All right. So a little bit of time passes. Um, everybody give me, this is sort of a random thing, give me an initiative roll. And we'll say that's the people that come down oh. first from their oh. own roof. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, not, a, not, not a combat. Oh. Uh, oh, of course I rolled. A dragon lands on the hotel. 18. 18. Dirty 20. Oh, man. Three, three. Well, you're That's a fresh dark loser. Six. Oh. I leave the couch. Six. Oh, nice. six. Oh, okay. six as well. Yeah. Okay, so it, it's... A little simultaneous. <laughs> yeah. So not needing to sort of lick their wounds as much, given that you guys were in the lead carriage, the first two to come down are Elaine and Doxley. You get down to the lower area. You see that um, Clemens is at the desk again. He doesn't sort of go to speak. He looks like he's kind of going through some records of who's in what room. He sees you kind of come down and gives you a nod, but he doesn't say anything to you. He goes back to his work. Food is included, dinners and breakfast, right? Uh, just breakfast. Uh -huh, okay. I'm afraid you've uh, missed today's meal, but tomorrow is complimentary. Well, thank you. Uh, how much would you say a dinner comes to? Um, here or at a different establishment? No, here, if I wait here. Uh, anywhere from five copper to silver and a half, depending on the robustness of the meal. Thank you. I think we'll be all right, Hill. I just, I must, I, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Warren. He goes back. Give me, uh, give me perception checks, both of you. What? <laughs> what? I just need to roll. I should have rolled harder. Rolled <laughs> harder. Uh, <laughs> six. Eight. Okay. <laughs> Not much to discern other than he seems very focused on what he's writing, like more so than just someone, you know, keeping track of who's in what room or whatever. Like you can see him really kind of like making some notes kind of very intensely, but unable to see exactly. Okay. They won't wait at the table. Sit down on one of the tables. As you guys are in the process of being seated, you come down, Kate comes down, you see, you can see, clearly see Doxley and Ilian sitting there. And once again, you get kind of a no from oh. Um, I'm gonna see them sitting down and I'm gonna go straight over towards them, sure. scooch in nice and cozy. It's like a booth, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, if you took one of the booths, there was booths and tables. Booth, booth, booth. booth. Great. booth. Yeah. Okay. You can take one of the I'm booths. gonna slide into the booth and kind of like <laughs> slam both my hands down on the table and look Doxley in the eye and be like, so. Were you able to communicate with the orc? No. Really? I thought we already established that he doesn't speak common. But M Mr. Warren didn't speak orc or anything like that? No. We could try to find some, uh, what do you need to ask him about? His potions and gizmos? I don't know, I thought they might be able to help me with something. Potions? Yeah. Is that what he had? 
You're the oh, only one. Crap. You and uh, you and Morgan <laughs> were the only ones that had seen that so far. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he had. <laughs> Oops. All kinds of sparkling things. I don't know. I only got to see them for like a split second, but yeah, I don't know. That was just one trunk. See, look, I gave you a little information. Maybe now you owe me some information when in the future <laughs> when you know something yes. about anything that I might help. I owe me. you information. Cool. When you were speaking to Mr. Clemens, you also brought up potions of cleanliness. You seem to know a lot about potions. Well, to be honest, I, I only know what I've read in books. You know. You're a big reader. Yeah. Oh. The practice of alchemy <laughs> isn't really, you know, allowed anywhere except for apparently here, so. Hmm. That's um, what you're doing here? I'm looking forward to expanding my knowledge as well as seeing the sights. Nice. Well, I've recently gotten into reading. I'm going through a very nice cookbook. Uh, so if you have any book recommendations for me, I would gladly accept them. And then when I'm finished with the cookbook, you can borrow it. If you want to read that. <laughs> you, you're reading a, a cookbook like it's a novel? Or? Yes. Uh, well, I haven't read much in my life. It wasn't something I did much. So recently, oh. I've started into reading certain things. Um, oh. Read a little bit about uh, plants and whatnot and oh. gardening. Lots of Nonfiction. Yeah, uh, rocks. I've read a book about rocks and geology. Oh. Uh, but and now the third one's the cookbook. Uh, the first two didn't. They were all right. Uh, Docs, you uh, you don't you don't read as much. No. Did you guys go to school? Are you twins? You kind of look like twins. We're siblings. Yeah, yeah. siblings. Si yeah, two. Not twins. No, no. Okay. I'm younger. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm I Irish older. twins. <laughs> What's Irish? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what's Irish? What is that? Uh, the, old, the old Highlands twin. <laughs> <laughs> From up north. Um, you guys no, you didn't really spend a lot of time in, in school then, growing up? We spent our fair share as any other kid, but uh, we books were not very interesting for our family. I'm growing sorry, up, wh right? why are we talking about this? Why are you so interested in our education and our upbringing? Well, I, d I don't really know anyone here, and you know, I I'm planning on staying a while, so I thought friends might be nice. Uh, Elena, it sounds like you're going to have a great friend in mm -hmm. a fellow. Well, we can all be friends. We we'll work all, on her. All, all very yes. As you, guys are, as you guys are talking, you hear like a <laughs> and the sliding of the door to the booth kind of opens up. And a kind of larger man with sort of hunched shoulders, and he's got a big kind of apron there that he's wiping his hands on in the moment. Get some food. Please. Yeah. We have potato skins. <laughs> and that's it. Right now, just potato skins. <laughs> Great. I'll take how many? Packed potato skins. With like, what? Packed with what? Bacon and mm. cheese. Mm. That sounds great. Uh, do you have any sour cream? That was in the cookbook. No. All right. Do you I'll have any hot sauce? Potato skins. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely right, sir. Please, three potato skins. Four copper for a helping of potato skin. Skin me sure. a potato. Oh, thank you. They're already skinned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking. So we get three for four copper? Three? Is that what it is? Four skins. Four skins. Great. For one meat. <laughs> Can I take two helpings? I want eight skins, please. If he sort of... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Good man. Be right back. <laughs> Shuffles around, <laughs> slides the door. And as that's going on as well, Heading up to the third floor at the sort of simultaneous, like <laughs> the doors kind of <laughs> batting against each other. Morning, and TC both emerge. Afternoon. Afternoon. Restful uh, hour for you? Yes, sir. For you? Ex oh, most I feel ready to take on the rest of the day. <laughs> she nods sort of cur curtly at him and can then goes down the stairs. Uh, Morna. Uh, uh, Morning, is it? Yes, sir. Mr. Welker. That's... <laughs> Tips. Oh, oh. I just... I couldn't help but 
notice that you were as flabbergasted as I at the notion of sightseeing. <laughs> Ridiculous, yes? Indeed. I imagine that most people that come to Bronk Hollow these days, it's probably some combination of running away or running towards something. I feel that is a safe assumption. Uh, you strike me as among those of us that I've met in the carriages, uh, that it might lean more one way than another. In what way do you think I lean, sir? Just that what's behind you might be more frightening than what's in front of you. I make no assumptions. I just, it just seems to me that we might have that in common. I, I, I'm sorry, sir, I, um, you are not yet familiar to me, and I appreciate, um. I may be mistaken, just an observation I made, but. Where are you from? I resided in Paran for many years, and that's where I come from just now. Other than Merlai, which we were all at together, weren't we? <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I don't wish to be unfriendly. I am just not particularly friendly. Totally. I, listen, this is the, the place to come to make friends and stay away from them. I, I understand that. I just, if you ever needed any help, uh, and you were looking to work at the penitentiary? As I said, uh, it seemed to be the most, uh, before uh, realizing it, hearing from our... Where upstanding folks are. Oh, just that that was honestly where the most work was. They had, they in need of the most hands, but perhaps I am wrong. Very well. Mm -hmm. Well, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. A uh, bite to eat, perhaps? Yes. Let's. Thank you kindly. Let's head downstairs. Initially, the, you don't see your former companions of the carriage, but after a moment, you sort of just hear a voice that you recognize, and you sort of move over and slide the door open, and you see it, it was the only booth that was closed. Nobody was occupying the other booths, so you see Doxley and Kate and Ilium. Welcome. Bit of nosh. Uh, potato skins, oh. as it were. And yeah. as if summoning him, potato skin. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Great, thank you. Gives oh. you a, a mighty helping of potatoes. I, I got some in advance. Uh, if, I didn't know when you guys were coming down if you want a piece of what I ordered here. You, um, you got enough for me? Well, there's eight here, and four is one serving, and I thought, I, I didn't know if you guys would want to eat potato skins, so I got an extra serving. I can eat them all if you don't want They them. They only have potato skins, so. Uh, uh. An order of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll get my own as well, thank you. I don't want to eat your food. Nope, no problem. Thank you, kindly. I want to steal food right from out your mouth. <laughs> I... Okay. <laughs> who, wait, who is sitting, who's sitting next to who right now? <laughs> uh, probably Doxley and Ilian were sitting next to each other and then you slid in. Yeah. And then who, well, there's yeah, three to a side. Next so to who me. went next Oh, to I was gonna say, there's not like an end cap to this. It, there's like a sliding door, right? Yeah. No, okay. I was gonna sit, like pull a chair and like awkwardly <laughs> sit at the, at the head of the You table. could do that, but the door would have to be open. Like the sliding door would have to be open. Okay. <laughs> Fine, yeah. Do it? You pull a stool up to the I'll, end. I'll sit next to Kate then. Mm. So we were just talking about our childhoods. Pretty fascinating. Mm. So, yeah, uh, how about you guys? Good to know. I don't even know your name yet. Oh, uh, apologies. Morna Ishti. Morna... Ishti. Ishti. That's a great name. All right, Marna. Nice to meet you. Thank you, and I'm, I'm sorry, you are... Ilian. Tyroon. Ilian Tyroon. Uh, and you, Miss... Doxley. Tyroon. Ah. They're not twins, though. Common misconception. TC, make a history check. I do. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> Four. 
Oh boy. <laughs> Even with those stats? Quiet. <laughs> the names mean nothing to you. Mm. <clears throat> Do they mean anything? To, no, no, they don't. They definitely don't. Um, uh, uh, who is older and who is younger? <laughs> what do you think? I thought it rude to ask someone's age so bluntly. Oh, uh, no. perhaps it is. No, I, I'm in, I'm interested. Uh, who do you think? Who do you think's older? Who's younger? Doc, look this way. <laughs> nice smile. Big older older sibling energy coming I, off of that I, one. I would say it is gossip. Lots mm. of burdens, lots of lots of pressure, lots of responsibilities. Well, you'd be right. Uh, Doc is older. That's true. Mm. I know how that goes. You, you are, are an older? older sister as well. Yeah. <laughs> Great. As as so a, much for you to follow as am I. Yeah. Oh, uh, oldest sister club. <laughs> siblings all across the board. So I'm to understand that we took on a job to blow some whistles. Yes. Is that right? Are you all doing it? Hmm? 20 gold. That's Not bad for a first job here. Just for an afternoon. I'm assuming you all are adept at protecting yourselves. We saw you at the cost, but... T- typically, yes. <laughs> yes, I was a bit put upon this last encounter. I was made to understand that we are not to defend ourselves, that there's no reason to engage in any conflict. We can certainly defend ourselves, it's just we probably won't even need to. We'll be out of the way. That would be my hope. That's the idea. Well, I have a feeling something bad will happen. Oh, what a terrible point of view. I wouldn't have thought that a that I would have seen a cleric this afternoon either and managed to work that into my day. I'm sure we all survive that. We can survive anything else as long as we stay together. <laughs> Power and friendship. Power That's and friendship. exactly what I think. Yes. TC feels something a little soft and sweaty on his back and it's the stomach of the man who's reaching <laughs> over you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have uh, utensils, or is this like a? It's a hand. Smash it's and like grab. they're little, uh, you know, the cup, almost like potato cups, little looking. Bolts. Yeah, little bowls. Little okay, cool. Bowls. I'm gonna reach out my uh, <laughs> right hand <laughs> from under my poncho and just kind of start shoveling. Sure. TC takes out a little handkerchief. <laughs> Put up the props. <laughs> Prop acting in bronco. <laughs> Very careful. We're big on that in bronco. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, keep going. Keep it easy. No, no, that's wrong. Every, it goes every potato skin is off the plate. Much like this. You look around and see other people. <laughs> Bacon well, might be a little bit older than I typically enjoy, but it does fill the stomach. It's not impressive fare, but you know, after being on the road for a while, often things taste good, better than they actually are. It's you know, it's not spoiled or anything, but it's far from a, a culinary masterpiece. Oh, the grease trap! Is the table like bolted to the floor? Yes, the booths are. The regular tables are not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick of this. I was just curious. The booths are anchored. Okay. okay. <laughs> Talks about a rage quit this meal. Oh my God. From the booth, you can hear the clamor of the thoroughfare. You guys have had a little bite to eat. You rested up. Still a couple of hours at least until you're set to uh, rendezvous at, at Excavation on Demand. What do you think of the potato skins? Should I memorize this recipe and make it later for us? Yeah, that would work pretty good. Yeah? All yeah. Right, great. I'll add that to the repertoire. All right. So <laughs> I lost a javelin while we were uh, fleeing for our lives. Mm. Um, I wouldn't mind maybe going to get more of them. Could use some more ammunition myself. I'll join you. All right. <laughs> um, Was it not an invitation? Forgive me if I'm oh, imposing. No, it's probably best to not wander around alone as a new person. Yeah. Flea I... bag. Flea bag, yes. <laughs> I will. <laughs> some trauma in that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. Flea bag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I'm I'm going to see my my business with uh, you're about the stonemason. Your friend? Yes, I am a stonemason by trade. 
does that surprise you? No, I just remembered it. <laughs> ah. Yes. Well, great. I hope it's a wonderful re-meeting of friends. Thank you. I do as well. Good luck. We don't run into you before, before five. I will see you at five. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. I might look for a, a library. I can start learning Orcish. Maybe I can get to know, see if mm. they have a book on languages or something like that. Library. <laughs> if there is one, I don't know if there is, but... Uh, I'll join you. A library. Yeah. Great, yeah. and you can give me a recommendation if you see something you know. All right, we'll look for cookbooks. I already have one. You can just borrow that one. Okay. Was, okay. I was just being friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you don't pick up on cues at all. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. 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 Right. Yeah. Who's first to I'll the park? I'll see you at five if I don't see beforehand. All right, keep your eye for an oil. Okay, let me think. Is there anything? It was Clemens who was still at the desk, yeah? Clemens is still Clemens there. Clemens is at the desk. And he is a half-orc. Clemens? No, that's good. <laughs> We've only Clay, had... Clayborn. Gujek is the only half-orc. He's the only of orcish blood that you've thought. seen so okay. far. Okay, yeah. Yes. For some reason I thought. Mm, dang it. All right. No, uh, Clemens is elven. In fact, he looks like a sea elf. He had that blue tinted skin. Oh, sorry, Warren. Yeah, Warren's human. Human. Yeah, got it. <clears throat> Warren's human. That. Yeah. Warren was the one you first met, who has the gambling problem. Clemens is the other, <laughs> is the sort of proper owner, and he is a sea elf. I'm gonna um, make sure I take my my copper out and leave it on the table. Sure. Yeah. yeah me too. I, uh, if I don't know what they have in town here, but if you see something like a dagger or something, if I can use something a bit smaller, something. If you see something for a good price, it's not necessary. But sure. Yeah. Okay. Right, for you. Great, so now that we've come up with our group itinerary, can we uh, move along to the rest of our day? I'm ready. All right. Doxley being the first one to want to get up and move, she starts to head outside. Are you following oh. her? As you walk back outside, you're swept up once again by the kind of whirlwind of activity in the thoroughfare. Horses, carts, c -c 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 pedestrians, prospectors, all here just as you are for their own kinds of reasons, whether it's as simple as opportunism or as complicated as one's relationship with their faith can be. You can definitely see some wandering eyes finding their way to you guys. In a town so early in its development, it's hard to be a new arrival that goes completely unnoticed. Not in a hostile or sort of conspicuous way, but you'll see people just kind of regard you as they go by, seeing a face that's unfamiliar to them. It also seems that word of trouble in the cusp has traveled rather fast. Judging by some of the gestures and pointed fingers, you see a couple of people kind of Like people just sort of reliving, retelling this story in sort of in their own way as word has begun to spread throughout the camp. Yeah, the pointing you just made. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does it seem like people are pointing towards us as in those were the most recent people to come to town? Maybe they've been, we've clocked them as like the newest. Perhaps related to, it seemed to be like, oh, there was some fighting in the cusp. Yeah. I think it might have been them. Okay. That's the kind of yeah. impression that you're getting. Right. That Damn. people have put those two things yeah. together. That Shit. there was an attack on a caravan and you're the newest arrival, so you mm -hmm. might be the same people that mm -hmm. they put okay. that together with. Um, and you anticipate that much speculation over who the cleric might have been chasing specifically, though your caravan would hardly be the first to have been pursued. All you can do now is try to strike a balance between assimilation in the camp and accomplishing whatever you came for, which starts with the first few steps that you take into the curious crowd of all these displaced citizens. So as you step out the door into the thoroughfares, Doxley and TC, the first ones out, you're coming right up to, it's number six on your map, is this kind of open air market that you also passed by on the way in. There's people hawking wares of all kinds. There's food, there's pelts, there's tools, there's some you know rocks and gemstones that someone might have found on their own private kind of mining claim. So there's a number of things taking place there. Um, both of you give me perception checks as you step out into the market. Okay. I'm so sorry, Matt. Can yes. Six is also where the like good grub, whatever that place is called. Shop. Uh, Shop yes. House. So sorry. There is so six. The the Roman numeral six mm. is the chop house. Okay. And then uh, number six is the right. open market there. Yeah. yeah. There's different shapes and colors for different totally, types of land. Totally. Yes. Sorry, I didn't realize the two sixes were right next to each other. That's very confusing. Mm. Real quick. Yep. Um, the rest of when we saw on our way in, it wouldn't be abnormal for us to leave there with our 
weapons. I've got like I'm armed with. I've got my crossbow. I've got my in a town like this. Yeah. More people are walking around with weapons than they are not. Right. Even if it's something simple, just a little dagger at the yeah. hilt or something. Um, people are armed. Not unusual. It would be unusual for someone to be in like full armor. Okay. That would be a little like you see people with leather armor or maybe just like a breastplate or something. Yeah. Like people aren't walking around in their full fighting attire. But okay. weapons. Unless it was something unusual, an yeah. unusually sort of less common weapon, right. wouldn't even no no one would even bat an eye at it. Right. Hmm. And uh, I'd like to keep my eye out for if I see any of the, the badges, the gray and the green badges. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I had you guys roll perception checks. Yes, yeah. 16. 16. 21. 21. Ooh. Ooh. Even above the kind of cacophony of shouting back and forth as people are hawking their things, as people walk by, sort of, fresh, 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 fish from the creek and things. Mm. One altercation that both of you immediately sort of pick up on, <laughs> there is a dwarven man who's currently pulling another person out of one of the stalls. So the, the open market is divided into maybe like eight to 10 stalls. And it looks like they aren't owned by those people. Like you take your stuff there, you set up, you sell for a little while, then you pick your stuff up and you leave and someone else can occupy that stall for a time. So it's just open to anyone who wants to hawk their wares when it's available. One person, a dwarven man, is pulling another person out of one of those stalls and like shoving him sort of down into the dirt in the thoroughfare. And in addition, sort of grabbing what look like, um, like fungi, like mushrooms and maybe some other plants and tossing them after that person that he just threw into the dirt. So he's sort of kicking this person out of the stall. And the individual that he tosses out, at first you think it's a child, but with olive green skin and very razor sharp teeth that they bear in protest as they're kind of extracted from their post, it looks like a goblin. Oh. It's a goblin here in Brunk Hollow. And as he sort of shoves him to the ground, you watch the man kind of stand over and the goblins are sort of bares his teeth at the dwarf. And in response, the man yells at him, bear your teeth elsewhere, Mungbean. Goblins yield their stalls to real citizens once the midday hours passed. So take your malignant fucking mushrooms back to your tattered shithole until tomorrow. Yeah, and he sort of gives him, he doesn't kick him, but he kind of kicks the dirt near him so that the goblin gets kind of covered in dirt a little bit. Mm. Tell that sorry fucking excuse for a man you call your leader. He's the one who negotiated them terms. Fucking mung beans. And he starts to set up in the shop and it looks like the dwarven man is a trapper of some kind. He starts to hang some pelts over kind of rods and things that are in the open market there. And the goblin starts to kind of collect his spilled, sundries and fungi that are out in the thoroughfare. And a couple times he has to kind of use his little dexterous fingers to like brush dirt off of them. And then he puts them into a little kind of pouch one by one. A couple times he looks over. <laughs> Is, he just warms that tape up. Uh, are goblins... <laughs> yeah. Like if coming across goblins back in Faran, mm -hmm. Would they have been similarly treated? Is it? Yes, yeah. they have a mixed reputation and they certainly would not be allowed to participate in like local government, mm -hmm. like positions of power, very insular communities that sometimes have a bad reputation because they're known as kind of scroungers and survivors. They will steal and not think a second word, not because it's malicious, but they're like, if something's there for me to take, yeah. I will take that. Like it's, it's doesn't, they don't even register. And so the fact that he's here using a cart, it's like, oh, Brunk Hollow is like allowing this. Yes, a little bit. That's a little yeah. unusual. Yeah. Possibly you get the impression that maybe the goblins that are here, however many there are, are trying to establish a reputation of their own that is separate from the typical goblin reputation. Mm -hmm. um, With this yeah. unnamed leader. Yeah, for a goblin to kind of be in a market hawking wares, that's unusual. They, you know, they might sell stuff to you, but it might be kind of a back alley agreement of some kind, or you would have to seek them out. Okay. So, yes. And do they typically know common? Uh, they do, if they're city born or, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Seems like they, uh, there's a tenuous relationship with the uh, little green ones type kind and the rest of Brunk Hollow, but. Fucking among me, stupid get out the well, seeing a cleric lose his powers was the only thing I was going to see today for the first time in my life. Mm. Huh. First time. And didn't your brother say earlier that you deal with these divine goings-on all the time? Maybe huh? embellishing, was he? 
He said that you'd had experiences like that before. Are you sure he wasn't referring to the road agents? Oh. Which happened simultaneously. <laughs> Perhaps. In the same location, involving just, the same people. I figured he was talking out of his ass, but... Forgive me. Bye. Bye. I've uh, realized that I have something to get, and I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Why don't I help you? <laughs> I uh, heard that there is a general store, a good, good, good home. <laughs> Let me think of it. Good as gold will probably be our next stop. May I escort you? Sure, yeah. Unless you see anything here at the market that keeps your eye. No, not at the moment. All right. Did I'll kind of go by, well, not out of the way, but just to get a little closer to see what kind of fungus and if I recognize anything. Okay. Give me, give me a food, you know, food versus. Give me a nature check. You will walk right by him. He's, okay. he's kind of right there. He's still picking up some of his things. 15? 15. It looks like more, not like ingredients for chemical or like it, yeah. it seems food related, like right. like edible fungi for. for... Okay. All right. It's gonna make my way past right. it. As you, you walk kind of right in front at one point, he kind of. Doesn't stop you. Just guys walk on by. As they begin to head in the direction of good as gold, the next people out the door. <laughs> we're gonna say it's Morna's the next person out the door, actually. Oh boy. Oh. Morna steps out into the thoroughfare. <laughs> yeah. Just as you do, you see uh, Doxley and TC kind of turning the corner there on that at that building across the street. Kind of watch them go away. You look at the market in front of you. Taken the activity of this town very different from the town that you came from. The level of activity here, the amount of people packed into this tiny space, a little overwhelming after you were, in this moment, you feel glad to have taken a little time to yourself instead of sort of getting bombarded with all the senses here in the town, the sights, the smells, the sounds. So, where would you like to go? I'd like to go back towards the boarding, Bernard's boarding, Bernard's boarding. and try to see if I can find Josie's place. Great, you start to head in that direction. Um, can you give me a perception check? Oh, sure yeah. Yeah. so much to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> not great. That's a six. Okay, there's a couple, it, it's a little hard to pick up on some of the activity that's surrounding it, but there's someone in the middle of the thoroughfare, kind of right in front of uh, number 11 there, the the lucky heathen, mm -hmm. that's standing on kind of an upturned crate, like a opposite turned crate, and they're holding a couple kind of pieces of parchment in their hands, and they seem to be appealing to the crowd at large, like they're shouting as they go by. And this you can clearly see, or clearly hear, they're trying to get people's attention as they go by. So the person's holding a couple flyers, and you hear sort of, serve your community and serve yourself. Drive beasts from the downwheel to make Brunk Hollow a safer place or try your hand at scouting the cusp. Not a job for cowards, make no mistake. But in addition to good wages, you get to spend your waking hours making a mockery of the gods. Who could turn down such an opportunity? Take a flyer and find additional details at the Merc Hall across the river. And she's sort of holding out pages. A couple people kind of grab one as they go by, take a look, kind of give a nod and continue along. She just she, she repeats that sort of little phrase over. Oh, go to the Merc Hall across the river. And as you're walking by, she does. I'm gonna nod at her curtly, but I'm not gonna say it. Okay. She continues to go to her pitch, continues sort of shouting out to the general crowd, and you work your way a little further along. And we're gonna kind of bounce to a number of different things. The next people out the door shortly after are Ilian and Kate. Uh, so, you don't happen to know where a library. No, but uh, should we ask uh, Mr. Uh, Clements? Uh, Clements, who's at the desk? Or Warren, he's at the desk. Cl uh, Clements is at the desk. Oh, he's great. Yeah, uh, sure. I'll just I'll just run back and, and ask. Great. Okay, so I'm just gonna duck back inside. Yeah, duck yep. back inside and see he's still writing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, excuse me, is there like a bell or something? <laughs> <laughs> there is not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna, like, gentle knock. Did you find the room to your liking? Oh, it is wonderful, thank you. I am so glad to hear it. Um, little sightseeing question. Is there a, a library or a bookshop or <laughs> anything like that? 
Oh, I'm sorry, you see it is. <laughs> oh, I'm... <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe like a stack of books on a corner somewhere. I believe that uh, collections of books of any kind are privately owned, to my knowledge. Would you recommend anyone that has a privately owned collection that might be interested in a chat or...? Just someone who has a thirst for knowledge. Yeah, maybe a local town scholar. <laughs> well, I don't know about a town scholar, but... Um... Ms. Crittenden, who I believe we spoke of mm, earlier, mm -hmm. she is knowledgeable about things that others are not, if that's the impression that you're going for. Thank you. And remind me, Mr. Ms. Crittenden is the one who's down by the river? Yes. Okay, okay. Crittenden's by the river. Okay, well, thank you. You'll hear the wheel turning and you'll know that you've found her place. Delightful, thank you. <laughs> if uh, Brunk Hollow ever erects a library, I will be sure to let you know. Maybe I'll erect it myself. Very well. Have a good day. <laughs> I'm gonna tuck my hat down and just sure. turn around. You join Ilium back out in the thoroughfare? Well, he wanted to make fun of me, but I did get the information we were looking for. Great, where's the library? Um, we need... <laughs> Well, there ain't a library, but um, we're gonna go down to that interesting sounding lady um, who has a little house on the river. Sounds like she might have some, some information. She might be someone with general knowledge about, about the world and uh, she, there's no library, okay? But, <laughs> but I'm trying sounds, to sell it to you. <laughs> she sounds smart, perhaps. In my head, she's, you know, she's kind of old. She's maybe wearing like a robe or something. So we should okay. go check it out. This is, sorry. <laughs> That's sad, I'm sorry, I'm sad there are no books. Um, but, sorry. <laughs> uh, Ilian is just, he can't get over the fact that there isn't a library. He's, he's, bummed. he's broken, he's a broken he's man. Bummed. So this is the place by the water mill. Um, I think it is the water mill. <laughs> okay, great, let's go. It is indeed. We're gonna skip off down the street. Same, to old maids. So we don't know exactly guys, where we're going, but we're heading towards the sound of the water. Yeah, you're heading yeah. to the river, and I, I think he gave you a brief description that it's near the bridge, near yeah. the South End Bridge. So you guys uh, start to head sort of down that T off of the thoroughfare. You begin to head down. Both of you give me perception checks. God, yes. Please not, please. <laughs> see it. Big rolls. Yes. Big rolls. Ooh. 25. 20. Wow, no, I'm like perceiving. 18, 18. Okay. Well, both of you notice as you're moving along, um, someone is leaning up against one of the buildings kind of on your left as you're going down the thoroughfare there. A younger man, maybe in his sort of mid-twenties, and he has a thick reddish turtleneck shirt and a, a patchy kind of uneven hair. It doesn't look like it was cut by an unskilled hand. It looks like there might have been like a singe or a burn of some kind. Like some of the hair and part of his scalp is like a little textured in a way that looks like a burn of some kind. So he has some kind of small injury on his head there. And in addition to that, he looks like he's either talking to himself or practicing a speech. Like you see him a couple times sort of. <laughs> like he seems like he's prepping himself for a, a conversation to come. And as you guys are moving along the way, he sees you and immediately you get that look that you've seen before in this town, which is, you are a flea bag, you are a new person in Brunkhall. You see that like recognition of someone that he's never met before. Hi, how do you do? Good, uh, good day to you as well. I, I don't recognize you. Did you come in last night with Beth Howell or this morning with Mr. Macklin? Uh, who's asking? Oh, just me. That's your name, just me? Oh, no, sir. I, I meant that I was the one asking. Oh, well, what's your name? Oh, Bodhi, sir. Bodhi. Okay, Bodhi. Um, what's it to you? Well, uh, welcome to Brunk Hollow, first and foremost. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was just hoping, and he has like a little piece of paper in his hand, that m maybe I could solicit the opinion uh, of an unbiased third party on the matter at hand. I wouldn't wish to waylay you if, if you're in a hurry. We have a bit of time. Okay. Well, I'm planning today to ask for a, a promotion of sorts. Or, or, if not a promotion, the taking on of additional responsibilities so that one day I might be fit for promotion. 
Do you work in the mines or at the prison? I do not. I, I work for Miss Crittenden. Oh, amazing. We oh. were just trying to go down to her house, not shop, water mill extravaganza. Give her and talk to her. Uh, oh, so yeah. this is great. Sure. Uh, I'm not sure if she's uh, back yet from the meeting that they were having, but uh, mm -hmm. do check. She might be. Uh, in the meantime, um, I was hoping maybe I could express my pitch and you could tell me if it if it reads as as sincere. Absolutely. What is it that you do for her right now? Right now, just gather supplies for her, clean up after her space, but I'd like to take on more responsibility. All right, hit us with your pitch. All right. Takes out his paper. Maeve. Her name's Maeve. Mm. Got that? Informal. We have a relationship. Too informal? No, no, keep going. I'll save my critiques for the end. Miss Crittenden. <laughs> I'm sorry I let the batch dry and nearly made a crater of your workspace. I will be more careful and I would like to learn more if you would be so kind as to teach me. Oh, that's it. Great. Too short. No, amazing. That was wonderful. I um, thought it was very authentic. To the point. Yes. Sincere. You made a crater, almost made a crater. That's impressive. There was a, a bit of an explosion, very small. Wow. Well, what kind of knowledge is it that you're hoping she might um, impart on you? Well, I would consider Miss Crittenden a, a master of potionry, if there is such a thing. Wow. A and lucrative profession, certainly, if you have the knowledge. And um, are you her only assistant. I am currently her only assistant. Oh, has she has she threatened to fire you or suggest she might be seeking someone new? No, ma'am. Oh. Have you heard such a thing? Oh. oh no, sir. No, sir. I'm um I'm just interested in in learning such things about potions myself. I thought maybe I could endear myself to her. Not that I would ever ever want to take your job. I mean, you're clearly so qualified and enthusiastic. Yeah, Take a that... persuasion check. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Yes. Oh, boy. 16. 16. She could probably use some more help. So, uh, if you'd like to speak with her, uh, I'd have no problem with that. Hmm. Sorry for asking, but is that what what this is, the explosion, did you get caught up in it? Oh, uh, you notice that, huh? It's not very noticeable, I just take in people when I talk to them. Unrelated. Oh my god. All right. <laughs> A different explosion. <laughs> Lots of explosions in Bronk Hollow, huh? In Bronk Hollow and, and other places too. Such as? Well, where I'm from. Oh, where are you from? Uh, Ichik originally. Long way from home. Hmm. How long have you been here? Um, probably five months at this point. Five months? And uh, I know this meeting that everyone's at is all hush-hush, but anything you know that you might like to share with us? <laughs> Wouldn't be able to share, uh, even if I wanted to. Hmm. I wasn't present at the meeting. Fair. Right. Fair. Well, I would say lovely speech. Um, maybe I'd put a bit more like... Uh, Pleases and thank yous if she's that kind of person. That's all I can really say. But I, it's Pleases perfectly and streamlined. What, what right. kind of person is she, would you say? Is she more mysterious or... Welcoming? She's a bit prickly like a porcupine. Oh, okay. <laughs> but she ain't dumb, that's for sure. Right, Got so. a real aptitude for science, mm. which is why I put to work in for her. The mountain air suits me, but a life in the dig does little for an inquisitive mind. <laughs> Were you uh, a student before coming to Broncala? I had some schooling, yeah. Amazing. Well, on the up and up, I wish nothing but the best for you, and if I do see Maeve here in a sec, I will give my regards to your prestige. Uh, don't tell her I'm coming. <laughs> I want to oh. surprise her with my pitch. Will do. I mean, I never met you. Well, like I said, uh, I don't know if she's back yet from her meeting, but you can try her place and uh, look for blue smoke coming free from the back window. Oh. That's a signal that she's in. Blue smoke. It's safe to approach. The tinted smoke ain't for experimentation. It's 
whatever she puts in those cigarettes of hers. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, one more question for you, Bodhi, right? That's right. Um, Dr. Blaylock, what sorts of man is he? Is he, would you say he's a, as smart as, as Maeve or mm. different? If you put it to me, I, I'd say Maeve's smarter, but Sawbones, you know, no substitute for real medical expertise if, if you have a problem. Hmm. And uh, do, does Mr. Blaylock, or Dr. Blaylock, excuse me, does he take on apprentices ever, or? Not to my knowledge. All right, well, thank you so much, Bodie. He sort of looks at you a little. He does do house calls if you have a private problem. Or did I misread that? <laughs> I have no idea how you read that, but we are just gonna get on our merry way. Thank you for the information. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> Takes a couple steps away. <laughs> Continues to practice his feet. What a sweet, burned, singed little man. Very explosion savvy, it would seem. Sounds like I could get a job. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's go see if Maeve's home. Yeah, if we, I guess if there's the blue smoke, and if not, I don't know, just Wait on her doorstep till four, and then we'll head to the place at five. Look around for stacks of books and corners. Sure. Oh, yeah, I'm good plan. Good yeah, plan. great. <laughs> you walk by the biggest stack of books. <laughs> <laughs> Jackpot. <laughs> it's all cookbooks. <laughs> oh, heaven. You guys head a little closer, and it's not far to the river, and in kind of a rare display of a residence being completely unadjoined with any of the neighboring homes. Most of the buildings you've seen so far, they're not connected, but they're butting up against other homes. This one is all by its lonesome here by the side of the river. It's a very compact little water mill by the creek, and it doesn't advertise itself as a place of business. You've walked by places that, you know, have the sign out front, or the doors are open, a clearly kind of welcoming in new patrons of any kind, but this one's closed off. You don't see any openings, no signs, nothing of that kind. The shingles are some in place, some missing on the roof. There's windows that are cracked and covered by planks. And there's untended grass growing up wild between the stepping stones that lead up to the front door. By far the part that looks in the best condition is the water wheel itself, which is sturdy and rotating with pounding fervor as the river rushes. It has this kind of wooden recurring noise as it spins. You don't see any potential customers lingering in the vicinity, so it doesn't strike you as the kind of place where you browse the wares. It seems like more of a place where you make your interest known and get the fuck out or <laughs> see if they have what you're looking for. Through one of the still functioning windows, there's a trail of kind of powdery blue smoke that's drifting out and upward until it disappears against the cloudless sky an indication that someone is either within or maybe some manner of research is being done. So if you wanted to inquire, it doesn't seem you've wasted your time by coming here. Good news, this is great. Uh, I'm a bit nervous now that we're here. <laughs> what I'm am I gonna- Prickly like a porcupine. So let's be careful with our words, I suppose. Yeah, you're right. I mean, what are you looking to get out of this interaction. Well, to be honest, uh, nothing. This is yeah, a really, thought. really sad uh, this outcome. Is a, it's a big me moment here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the potion uh, thing, that's great. This could take off for you. Um, I know, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I mean, what? she's the smartest person in town. You know, I don't want to negatively present myself, you know? Maybe I, I should have been rehearsing my speech like Bodhi, I don't know. No, no, just, just be yourself and you'll do great. Let's go knock on the door and just see how it goes. All right. Okay, great. After okay. you, this is your moment. Okay, I'm gonna take a step up to the door. I'm gonna do like a deep breath moment. Kind of like adjust my poncho and just make sure my hat's a little. Another even. couple puffs of blue cloud kind of come out the window as you're settling yourself. All right. Uh, came to Bronk Hollow for a reason. Let's see what happens. And I'm gonna. Knock at the door, confidently. Kind of a hollow sound to it. Uh -huh. Seems like a thin door, not a very thick door. Mm -hmm. no, sorry. Nothing? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be too pushy. Let's give it a couple seconds to see if <laughs> she, you hear some stirring. Some, some mumbling, maybe? She shuffles around? Yeah. Okay. 
Nothing happens, although after a couple seconds, there's another stream of blue smoke comes out the window. I feel like she's ignoring us. I'm not going to lie. Gosh, I am feeling a dilemma right now. What time is it? Um, so you guys took a rest. It's probably like 1.30. Oh, God, we have so much time. Mm-hmm. Uh. Make friends already. <laughs> <laughs> well, how important is this to you? If it's important to you, you should knock again and see if she'll come. Oh, you are a very confident young blue person. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to try again. <laughs> Miss Crittenden? I heard you might be looking for a new assistant. Now, I know you might be busy right now and, and I don't want to bother you, um, but I just want you to know that I'm new in town and I have minor experience and a whole lot of interest in learning whatever it is that you know. I'm staying over at Paramount Longin. My name is Kate. If you want, you can open the door now. You can come by, see me, or I'll stop by later this week. Consider this my formal application. Thank you. That's a flea bag fucking pitch if I ever heard one. <laughs> well, Everyone my... else knows to just open the damn door. Okay, I'm just gonna like, look over. Very encouraging, and I'm gonna open the door. <laughs> you step inside. Inside, the cramped quarters look like a university class on glass blowing. There are beakers, vials, bottles on every surface, often uncorked or haphazardly arranged in a way that makes you worry that if a passing bump with a countertop might cause a domino effect of shattering and destruction. As you might have suspected, the water wheel isn't set up to do any grinding or rolling of crops like you would expect in a kind of real sort of farmer's water mill. The wooden beam coming in through the wall is attached to a paddle just above a large iron vat. So it's converting the rotation of the wheel into a hands-free method of continuously stirring whatever is in this vat here. And sitting on a stained table by the back, with her knees like pulled up to her chest, is an elven woman, sickly thin with pale skin and a dark green dress over which is draped a leather apron like you might see on a blacksmith. Her hair is tainted, uh, tinted a pinkish hue in several spots and it's hard to tell if it was intentional or not, if that hue was the result of some kind of, something that got in her hair or if that was sort of intentionally uh, done by her. And she pushes the window open a little further and a stream of blue smoke pours out into the open air. And she puts out the cigarette on the desk that she's sitting on. And that's where we're going to take a break. Oh, <laughs> what did I say, Chad? What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, break, 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 break. We will meet Ms. Crittenden when we come back. Um, you guys are off on your journey in Broncolo. Here we are. Wow. This is so exciting. <laughs> I love this. Things to see about town. Uh, you've gotten acquainted with some of the uh, I wanna, local. I want to meet this goblin leader. <laughs> That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. the next Pretty on my list. Cool. Uh, that may or may not be uh, present in the camp, uh, who's negotiated terms with the camp yeah. to, uh, yeah. to have some kind of yeah, freedom of, of selling and movement within the camp. Huge. Um, that is where we're going to take a little break. Um, during the break video, we once again, just in case people missed it, because we know people love it, is the rolling video from our staff. Well, we've so got a couple puzzles. There are games as well. And so then some rollings. Right, it's a medley of both. Oh. Um, enjoy the... Uh, Have you not watched your goddamn video enough at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Never enough. <laughs> oh, wow. My uh, goodness. Um, um, and for folks on TikTok, we just go offline for TikTok, then we're coming back in 15 minutes on TikTok. So if you follow us, you'll get a little notification that we're live again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Wouldn't that make it so nice? The deal. <laughs> Maybe you should dig up a little funnel. <laughs> To follow. <laughs> um, that is where we're gonna take a little break. We'll come back. We'll see you guys on the other side. Great. Let's see you soon. Oh my god. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tabletop Notch and Brunk Hollow Chapter 2. Mm. 
The group has spread about town to see to some business before reconvening possibly at either um, Paramount Lodgings or Excavation on Demand to assist Mr. Bison uh, with his dispute against the clinkers. Just take a nice hike in the woods? Yes, or alternatively take a nice hike in the woods. But before we get back to business... Oh yeah, I gotta do that thing. Uh, okay. Do that thing! Okay. Uh, hold on, hold Whoa, on. Oh, hypes. Holding. <laughs> Level four hypes. We have hypes? Ooh, a hype, hype, a hype train? That's a exciting. Hype a hoople oh. hype. Choo-choo. Um, <laughs> a hoople hype coming through phone call. Okay, <laughs> Eloquence Gaming subscribed with Prime, and so did Derpy hey. Bunny Lol. Subscribe <laughs> Derpy, it's a, that's a friend of mine. Oh, hey. Derpy. Derpy. Uh, hey, Nerf friends. Master 09 subscribed. Resurrect Sean subscribed. I as Jog subscribed. Hello and welcome. Crazy Logic gifted a sub. Helmer gifted a sub. Crazy Logic gifted 10 subs. Wiz Renning gifted a Crazy sub. Crazy Logic gave 10 more subs. Oh, oh, my. Nerf Master 09 gave out five community subs. Yes. Um, also, hello, Woody and Steven, who are in the chat. Oh. Your friends. Hello, thank you, hi. <clears throat> Those are my friends. <laughs> oh my gosh, hi, Woody and Steven. I, I have love friends. They're, they're my friends, too. Some of us okay, okay. also have friends. <laughs> Hard to believe. Um, Where's my friends? <laughs> where are, where are what, what friends? What friends? <laughs> Um, so thank you and welcome. Thank you guys very much. Yay. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for your generosity. We are going to hop right back in. And where we're going to hop back in is in the thoroughfare. <laughs> On our way back in the direction of the bridge that we crossed over to get into Brunk Hall. Heading back in the direction where you originally entered into town, you see the livery, the boarding on your left, where Baker's wagons look like they're currently undergoing some repairs. You know, some of the places where they caught fire or pieces of them got knocked off. You can see a couple people that you don't recognize, ranch hands or, you know, repair men of some kind that are up top on the roof, sort of either hammering nails or prying sort of loose singed boards from the, from the, uh, from the wagon. You walk a little bit further and did we give you the number on the map for this one? Mm. Let's see. No. Uh, what so, scene are we doing? <laughs> number eight there, which is just across the bridge and just now in the direction you're going, it's just past the uh, the boarding house. Roman numeral eight. Roman numeral eight. You see just beyond the wagons and the boarding, another very functional sort of building that has a number of logs and tree lengths of different kinds sort of stacked, organized in different piles. There's some thicker trunks in one pile, some kindling and thinner branches in another. Some of them are being stripped by some people, so getting some of the leaves and the bark off to strip it down to usable wood. You can hear on the inside, there's a sort of small, not a barn, more like a storehouse that's just off to the side of it. And you can hear inside kind of an echoing, and some, Sort of people chopping all these things into pieces, getting them ready for whatever construction they might be sent to next. Give me a perception check as you approach. Doty. <laughs> Don't fuck it up. It's two. It's two. As you approach, you're kind of up on the balls of your feet and looking into the interior, trying to see if it's been a while, but maybe to see if just someone's face kind of immediately sparks a bit of recognition of some kind. You kind of get a little closer and you put your hands on the fence that's around the exterior of the property. You just kind of peer in, you look at some of the people. No faces that seem to immediately recognize. Okay, um, can I try to find somebody working? And There's a number of people working. You might have to just like shout out to them. They're like in the sort of either in the shed or just sort of working over by the piles of wood. Whoever is closest, I'm gonna okay. holler out. Sir. Yep. Excuse me. Is um is a Miss Kennedy available? This is her place, but she ain't here. Um. Do you know where I might find her? I think Bison called her. Ah. And and do you know when the meeting might be done? Well, I think the meeting's over. Ah. I think uh, he needed some construction or lumber of some kind. Ah. Um, um, well, I will try another time. Thank you. A message you'd like me to pass along? Um, no. I'll, I'll stop by another time. 
A name you'd like to leave? Um, Morna. I'm not sure she'd remember me. Don't don't worry about it. Thank you kindly. She's gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> he tips his cap, sort of. He has a sort of a curious expression on his face, and she's gonna be like stupid, stupid. Um, I I guess I'll. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. A little wandering. Uh, yeah. She I'll starts to wander through town. Yeah, Morna is sort of unsure a little bit, unable to make contact. You take in the town a little bit, and once again you get that feeling uh, not overwhelmed, but just the stimulus is quite intense. Like yeah. from where you're from originally, like to be here, a couple of people kind of noisily pass by. So, excuse me, excuse me. You have to kind of duck out of the way. Another court cart with a horse kind of comes by on your right side. And you just kind of Center yourself, take the place in, take a few steps forward again. Again, you get to that point where the person was kind of hawking their flyers. They have a little crowd around them. They seem to be sort of explaining something to the crowd in front of them. You see the hotel beyond that, take a few more steps. Anywhere you'd like to wander to, even if they're sort of uh, unsure of your direction? I guess I'll sort of go towards EOD and okay. just see if I spot a familiar face you there. I, I mean, I'm also kind of on the lookout in general to see if I see any familiar faces. Okay, give me an investigation check. Okay. Um, that is uh, 14. 14, okay. As you're moving back through the thoroughfare now again in the opposite direction, you certainly don't see a, a Kennedy, a Josie Kennedy face that you recognize, but you notice a couple things. One is that Mr. Warren, sort of shuffling through the thoroughfare, he tips his hat to a couple of people, <laughs> sort of big smile on his face, and then he turns to his right, where he sees the lucky heathen, and he <laughs> steps in <laughs> through the door after leaving the Ooh. hotel. Oh, so you watch Warren. Mr. Warren kind of head Come in on, there. Dude. Go to meet his ruin. Got it. <laughs> And in addition to that, it seems like the per the person who was sort of speaking to the crowd hands out their last flyer. They had like a pot, like a little stack of them. They hand out their last one, and sort of gives like a motion that they're done. They step off the box and they pick up the box and they start to walk away. And that crowd sort of slowly disperses. Some people are just kind of like, <laughs> I'm gonna pick one up. Oh. I <laughs> see it. On the ground, I'm not gonna talk. Sure, yeah, you, you go see. to the crumpled one, and you sort of pick it up off the ground, and it's an advertisement for the Brunk Hollow Merc Hall, the Mercenary Hall. Mm. It just says, serve yourself by serving your community. Good pay, low risk, wages paid to a third party in the event of death. Oh. And at the very bottom it says, we'll put dinner on the table if you provide the spice. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. the spice. That's so cool. What the fuck does that mean? Bill and Barbara. <laughs> Spicy. She's gonna fold it up, stick it in her breastplate. Recrumple it. <laughs> <laughs> just like it was yeah. back on the Yeah, just, she's gonna smooth it back up. <laughs> stick it in the top of her breastplate. We're gonna pivot a little bit south of town, where TC and Doxley have made their way in the direction of good as gold. And in your quest to find this place for possible restocking, resupply, you pass by a pair of buildings that citizens of Brunk Hollow are streaming in and out of at this hour. One that looks to be an eatery or cafeteria of some kind, that one was mentioned to you, the chop house. And the other one, almost unmistakably a saloon of some kind. You can see drunks and music drifting through the doors with about equal frequency. And just past that saloon, you can start to hear some of the water rushing in the creek. You're getting close enough to be able to hear the river itself. And there's a two-story structure with a small stable of its own attached to the far side that a couple horses snouts are peeking out of. Over the entrance to this building, there's a cloth banner that's hanging kind of askew. And it looks like it's covering what was a wooden sign. So there was a sign there before, and now there's a new cloth sign hanging over that one. If you can make it out correctly, it looks like the sign previously said, Samson and Samson Imports. And now the cloth one covering it says, good as gold. So the cloth manor has been hung over it. 
The open windows and doors allow a good amount of light inside, where you can see tables and shelves boasting all kinds of equipment that you would expect to see in a town like this. Mining equipment, horse tack, boots, waders, fishing rods, climbing gear, carpentry tools, all the usual essentials for somewhere where you might have to fend for yourself, build your own things, make a living on your own. The place has all the hallmarks of any general store that you would have frequented before, with a couple notable differences. One is that there are dozens of mirrors resting or hanging at various angles around the main sort of floor showroom area. Mm -hmm. That combined with the fact that the two men behind the counter are sitting on almost comically high stools, so you have to actually look up to address them, mm -hmm. makes you think that this place might have had a recent string of thefts so they now wish to eliminate any blind spots. So they can see the floor, and they can also see one of the dozens of mirrors around the room so that no nook in the store is sort of Security out of sight camera. at wow. any moment Genius. as they're sitting there. So the two of them are sitting on these high stools on the opposite side. You guys haven't fully entered yet. You're just outside the doors, sort of peering inside. And you, that's what you see. Hmm. I wonder if there's been any trouble for the Sampson brothers, either betwixt themselves or with the locals. Seems like a possibility. Why would they change the name? Marketing? <laughs> Perhaps. Let's go find out. All right. After you. Make sure you don't open the door. Make sure you don't try to steal anything. Looks like they've got their eyes out. Do I have to keep my eye on you in here? I'm just giving you a polite suggestion. I won't. No, of course not. Get inside. The doors are open, it's a yep. set of double doors that's already open. You notice that um, certainly in addition to the hotel in here, like some of the businesses during prime sort of business hours, they have their doors open mm -hmm. that people can kind of walk in and out of as long as the weather kind of permits. Um, so it's, you can almost tell if you're quickly walking through the thoroughfare what's like a place of business versus not a place of business sort of based on whether or not it has a sign or whether it's open or something like that. So you step through the threshold, threshold of the door, and one man who's sort of writing, taking inventory, he has a number of tools on his desk, like hammers, and then some pliers, and something else. He looks like he's taking inventory of what he kind of has available to you. But he hears you enter as you come in, he looks up. Hello, welcome to Good as Gold. I don't think I recognize you. My name is Bailey Sampson, and this is my brother, Dustin Sampson. Bailey, Dustin, cheers. I do have to tell you, if you're looking for Samson and Samson Imports, I am afraid that you are in the right place. It just might be confusing to you. We used to be called Samson and Samson Imports, but that was back when my brother and I were the ones making trips back and forth to Broncolo. Now that we have a permanent place of business here, we're no longer the ones doing the actual importing, so we thought the name was misleading. Clarity is important. It seems confusing to you. So we used to be on the wagon? No, I'm saying Going that, back and forth from Piran. I'm and saying some of these... thank you for the clarity. I I understand. Oh. Welcome to Good as Gold. Uh, we do still organize the imports. I feel like I need to clarify. <laughs> if you want something imported, it's not going to be Samson and Samson doing it. Mm. It's probably going to be like Jeff or Amelia. Ah. Well, they won't get their names on the sign, though, will they? I suppose not. No. <laughs> uh, feel free to browse, look around, let me know if you need help with anything. Thank you, yes. I, I, I'm looking for a bit of, uh, and I'll kind of draw my, uh, <laughs> my pet coat in. Uh, it has my, my hand crossbow. A bit of ammunition, perhaps. We have an assortment of bolts, yes, not unusual. Any special ammunition out of the ordinary, perhaps? Make a persuasion check. Oh, what? <laughs> Gotta persuade this guy to sell? Persuade. What is this guy up to? Mm. Mr. Welker. 16. If you are interested in certain specialty items, mm. you can take a look at our Samson and Samson Imports catalog. Mm. <laughs> but I would say that priority imports go to people of longer standing in the camp. Uh, as you become better known or have a reputation for helping or having roots in the camp, we're happy to make sure that you're accommodated. But would you like to browse the catalog? I would, yes. He goes to his desk, sort of pulls something out, and he takes kind of a thick stack of parchment out. Do you guys have your monitors on? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and see. Oh, oh my God. 
Um, we're introducing something that we're trying out uh, in this campaign. Oh boy. Um, I'm gonna bring it up here. What? You're ready to so, be. this is the catalog for Samson and Samson Imports. Oh, can they read the very bottom or is it cut off? The very bottom says, we can get stuff for you, but not for free, you have to pay for it. <laughs> Clarity. Yeah. The way that this works is uh, your ability to ask for items to be imported into Brunk Hollow is a little bit based on your reputation, mm. which in part is certainly the actions that you take within the camp, but we also wanted to implement a little bit of uh, viewer participation. Oh, chat! So for, <laughs> in order to request items for import, you have to spend subscriptions that we have, we will keep track of, which I believe is up there. Yes, the tracking is up there. Oh. So as you browse, it's like this small number up there oh. in the corner. As you browse through the Samson and Samson catalog, which if you can draw your attention to, you will notice oh, that no. they have a sort of cost, and that cost is not gold, that's subscriptions that you can redeem for items. So, so it's redeemed, it's taken off the total each time those things Yes, are taken off the total, yes, each time. Oh, and man. in addition to that, it, something that needs to be clarified is you're not buying them, you're just having the import request. You still have to pay with gold mm -hmm. once the items arrive. But you can request that certain oh. items are imported. Look so at it, that yummy stuff. As you can see here, some <laughs> potions, oh, some nice. oils, some ammunition, some acid. Oh, baby. Flip the page here, we have some oh, items of various baby. kinds. Wow. Amulets. I want the goggles of night. I don't know what they do. Goggles. You don't need those, you're an elf, you have dark vision already. <laughs> but they look so cool. <laughs> it actually does extend the range of dark vision okay. for people who have it already, okay. so not use it. Can you just get some Saddle goggles? Saddle the Cavalier! <laughs> <laughs> So as we flip through here, you'll see that yeah. there are uh, Ooh, smoke sticks many, are good. <laughs> many things available to request as a uh, oh, thunderstones. A thunderstones. Oh, wow. yeah, is Tanglefoot? Is that a? Oh yeah, what is that? Basically <laughs> a jar of tar. Basically a jar of tar. Uh, it, it's like a <laughs> sticky substance that can make it hard to move through. Creates like some difficult terrain. Um, and then, thank you for browsing on the back of the brain. <laughs> She's trying to read the small script. Does it say anything? The, the small script small is script. gibberish. It's Dorum <laughs> ipsum dorsum. <laughs> yes, it's all like gibberish Latin. Oh. Um, so, oh, this is God. the catalog that you see that Samson and Samson- What about the board. amulet? <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but you constructed this all by yourself, correct? Yes, this is all made by us. <laughs> well done, well done. Well 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 if people want to, so cool. we'll do both. So there is a link to this, which we um, can put in chat so people can look at it, and not right the second. Oh, okay. Um, in addition, I do have a hard copy so that you can oh like, look gosh, up close. Yes. Look through. Uh, Super cute. That's so cool. Oh, man. <laughs> Ultimate problem dissolver. <laughs> Give me all these throwable goodies. So the so as he implied, <laughs> the implication being, you know, your reputation for whatever that means is able to he's able to accommodate um, some specialty imports, which again would take time. He does yeah. have to send for them and have them brought back. It doesn't happen instantaneously. But uh, <gasps> Samson and Samson imports. Oh my god. <clears throat> I love the it's companion so compass. It's very funny. <laughs> companion compass. Yeah, if you have a, uh, some questions about yeah. them, you can ask those as well. But, uh, TC is, TC is <laughs> drooling as he looks <laughs> through it. As someone, as you can see, we have some ammunition that is yeah. uh, more powerful than your master crafted in a way that makes it easier to uh, hit your target. Ah. Hmm. As someone who does like to smell good on a regular basis, I do look forward to having the stink of newness off me here, my goodness. Oh. I will say that it says on the front, Samson and Samson Imports, a reminder that <laughs> we're not Samson and Samson Imports, we're now good as gold. I think I'll find a way to keep that in mind. Okay. And we can get stuff for you, but not for free, you have to pay for it. Ah. <laughs> I hadn't read that yet. Thank you. Um, I suppose for now, just some regular ammunition. Of course. He he walks you over to um, to a shelf that has a number of uh, bolts and cases. It's one gold for a case of twenty bolts. He doesn't sell them individually. It's like a small one gold for twenty. That's <clears throat> well. If you're running tallies, I'll take two of those cases. Of course. And. Uh, 
Have you got any cow traps? Uh, we do, yes, of course, in case you need to slow down a beast that's chasing you through the downwield. Precisely. I can direct your attention over here. And for a bag of caltrips, that's one gold as well for a single bag of caltrips. I'll take another two bags of those, please. Happy to accommodate. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you've been very quiet. Is there something I can help you find? Javelins. We do have javelins, yes. Um, just standard javelins. Do you have others? No. <laughs> we can get them for you, but not for free. You have to I've pay for them. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, how much do you sell them in bulk or individually? Or uh, We sell them individually because uh, they're a larger item, five silver per javelin. But if you're buying them in bulk, you could get the discount. Could I have six? Uh, that's not enough for a discount. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bulk meaning? Uh, at least ten. <laughs> can I have ten? Sure, you can have ten javelins. Uh, so <laughs> normally that would be 50 silver, but let's call it 40. Silver. All right. Uh, I couldn't help but notice. Uh... Makes a bit of noise as he like gathering ten javelins. He he sort of sets them down on a desk and runs like a piece of twine underneath. He like throws it underneath and and, just, and he starts to like tie it into a little bundle. I admire the uh, mirrors, the uh, decoration. Yes, it helps us keep an eye on everything. It's a very big store, as you can see. Samson and Samson Import. We used to be Samson and Samson Imports. We used to have more people here in the actual store, but now they're out on the road uh, doing the imports. So it's just Samson and Samson looking at the store. So it's harder to keep track of everything. Do you ever have problems with theft? Uh, no. Does that seem to <laughs> make it inside? Uh, I don't know if I have no. to, but. <laughs> Oh, I'll honor that. I'm <laughs> inside. 16. 16. Um, he covered it mightily quickly, okay. as if he maybe didn't want to talk about it. But yeah, it didn't, not only did it not seem true, I wouldn't say he was necessarily trying to hide it, just that he didn't want to talk about it, sure. is the impression that you get. Um, and how about your now uh, staff that's important? Do they ever have problems? We encountered some road agents on the way in. We have on occasion had a problem with road agents. I wouldn't say it happens regularly. We do make sure that if you place an order through Samson and Samson Imports, which is now good as gold, if you place an order through us there, we do guarantee that if some of your goods don't make it, that you're reimbursed for them. Got it. Well, I was also going to offer our services. We've turned down some road agents on the way in. If you ever need some escorts or Somebody to watch the shop at night? That's very good to know, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Do you know uh, who it was that you saw on the road? No, never mentioned the name. Why? As there are some road agents that um, we've heard about. They've they've attacked multiple times. It's not always a new person. So Regular customers, as it were. Uh, yeah, I don't like to refer to them as customers because they're more like thieves. You don't we look out for? Uh, Horton Boyd is one that's come up a number of times. Right. He seems to be very well connected. He knows when wagons are coming and going from Bronco. I'm not entirely sure how he knows that. But um, yeah, if you want to find out how he knows that, feel free. That's something that you'd like to know. Well, that would be nice for anyone who ships goods or mail. I know that uh, Izzy Narvos had a problem with Horton Boyd. Mm. She runs the courier service, and she's had a problem with road agents, although they do attack wagons less that have mail because it's not as valuable, but sometimes mm. packages come and go. Mm. Well, right. if we ever find that information for you. Izzy might have more information about uh, Horton Boyd specifically. All right. All right. Was there anything else you needed? Not at the moment. I, once I do uh, find my fortune here, as it were, I might uh, have some bigger purchases to make. Do you keep Alchemist's Fire in stock? Uh, Alchemist's Fire, better to ask maybe uh, Miss Crittenden over by the creek, or also perhaps Dr. Blaylock has some alchemical supplies on his person. All right, all right. Well, thank you kindly. Uh, yes, nice to meet you, both of you. Yes, lovely. Sam's walk over there. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I assume right. Bailey. Really yeah. Once again, Just Bailey. Just walk out with it. <laughs> Bailey Samson, my brother Dustin Samson. Samson and Samson Imports is what we used to be. We're now good as gold. 
Bailey, Dustin, John. Cheers. You guys head back outside? <laughs> well, interesting family. Yeah, um, you're getting a little stuff. I, I'll have you remember that I quite emptied my pockets on the way here to keep us all alive. No. Did you not see my keeping our divine intervention away with a bit of alchemist fire? I did see. That was quite good. And I'm hoping that our half orc friend might help me replace that. Interesting. Did you get a chance to talk to him anymore? No. He doesn't speak common. Well, if we find somebody who knows orc, may at least write a note to him or something like that. Wouldn't mind that at least replaced. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Shall we head to. Oh, yeah. What? What? What were you about to say? <clears throat> Forgive me. I, I don't want to make presumptions, but it occurs to me that the people that make their way to Brunk Hollow here are either running away from something or running towards something, and <laughs> out of all of our new friends that we've made in the carriages, I noticed that you and your brother seem very mission-driven. Maybe you looking for something quite specific. I didn't know if we had that in common. <laughs> Jeez. What? I mean, we're here for work. Right. Aren't we all? Uh, I guess I just... If you need any help in anything specific, I'm good at keeping my ear to the ground. All right. What's your skill set? Do you have a resume? As I said, keeping my ear to the ground, and uh, typically uh, not being noticed while I try to do it. Is that where you, uh, back from wherever you came from, that's what you did? Here and there, yeah. All right, that sounds like we could make something work. Just offering my help if you ever need it. All right. Thanks. Hmm. Where do you guys start to head? Just so I know which direction you're going in. Huh? I'm down to this cold. Well, uh, the, I know that Maves is by the watermill there. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> while, Anthony's map is labeled. While you think, yes, we will pivot indeed over to uh, oh. Maeve. Oh gosh! <laughs> Where just inside the door, you've come face to face with the elven woman. Finishes sort of blowing her smoke out the window. Finally, sort of turns her attention to you. She makes no kind of indication of welcome or warmth. She doesn't sort of motion in. She doesn't motion to a chair. She doesn't sort of ask you to step further in. You're literally like at the threshold of the door. She takes kind of one final drag. So? What's up? <laughs> I sincerely fucking doubt you came here to ask me what's up. Well, earlier, you know, I was trying like a sincere thing, but then I, that didn't go over so well. So then I was trying like a casual thing. Clearly that wasn't the move either. Uh, I don't like your friend creeping in the doorway, so ask him to come in or shut the fucking door. Oh, Ilian. Sure. Uh, nice to meet you. Ilian, I'll stay out of the way. Sure. Uh, we just met. As you already know, I'm new in town, but the thing is, we passed by Mr. Bodie on our way here. Yeah, um, Bodie works for me. Yeah, I was just wondering if you were looking for extra help. No. <laughs> All righty. As you can see, I have Bodhi. All right. Well, is there any chance that you're looking for a little security around here? Is that a veiled fucking threat? Oh, no. I was just, in all honesty, looking for education on whatever it is that you do here and seeing if there was anything I could offer you in return if you didn't have any openings for employment. Seek your education elsewhere. Do you have recommendations for that? Recommendations for fucking what? 
Somewhere I could learn more about black powder? Make a persuasion check. Okay. Does her smoke smell like anything in particular? Uh, make a perception check. <laughs> 12. 12. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Aww. <laughs> 21. 21. Damn. <laughs> the smoke has it kind of, it's kind of leaving the room at this point, but you, the room, the space is very small, so it certainly had an odor to it before it began to dissipate out the window. And it's hard to exactly pinpoint it, but it's not just, as you might have assumed, it's not just tobacco. And in addition to that, it smells like something, like a sedative? Like like a poison that might be a sedative, but in very sort of trace amounts, almost as a way to like sort of calm oneself. If someone was like feeling very anxious or uh, sort of even afraid, like, pe- like people would, you don't know the name of the substance, but people would use that as a way to sort of settle their nerves. Mm-hmm. Okay. That sort of sedative kind of uh, substance. Um, it was 12, you said. She sort of gives you a long look. I don't know anything about that. Interesting. And what if I did know something about that? Would that be interesting to you? In exchange for little education. The implication being here that you want to come work for me and in exchange you what teach me how to make black powder? Yeah, I like that implication. And you could do that. Teach me. <laughs> could you teach me? I asked you fucking first. <laughs> As you know, alchemy is not really something for which knowledge floats around in the world outside of Broncalo. Maybe I have my hands on something, something that's belonged to my family for a long time but I don't really know what to do with it. Can you produce the item? Oh, not right now. Not unless you offer me some. No thanks. Well, like I said, (laughs) staying over at Paramount Lodging, if you change your mind or if uh, Mr. Bodie burns off your hair or something, you know where to find me. Fair enough. All right, Alien. Let's go. It's very calming in here. Uh, very nice sense. Is there something I can purchase that from you? Is that, is that something you sell or something I can take? Let me lay something out real clear that both of you don't seem to understand. People come here, they tell me what they want, and I make it for them. Is that not what I'm doing? I'm asking if I can get some of that whatever the aroma is. is oh, nice. you want some of the whatever? <laughs> if you have some of the whatever, I'll... Strangely think. enough, the whatever's not on the fucking menu. Fair enough. That's all I was asking for. Thank you. You have a beautiful home, ma'am. And I'm just gonna spin on my heels, <laughs> walk out, absolutely slam the door. <laughs> in in there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Well, uh, now that she's gone, actually, do you have something that I could take that has any sort of way I can learn language or anything such as that? I'd be willing to give you some gold, whatever it's worth for you. All right, that I might fucking have. Uh, Okay. Probably take me a couple of hours to whip up a batch. Sure. Um, So not a book, but... You're looking to teach yourself, not buy one from me. Well, I I would like to try to teach myself, but if you have a way of learning language quickly, I mean, that could be useful as well. I got a potion that would allow you to do such a thing. Oh, great. It would be bad business practice for me to teach you how to do everything I fucking know how to do. Honestly, <laughs> person to person, I was looking for a book on Orcish, but if you don't have that, then the potion sounds very... Nice. Two hours. Great. Do you need an advance payment for that? Actually, how much is that before you get working on that? <laughs> uh, let me get me. 500 gold. You have heard of these before. It's a potion of comprehension. That's literally yeah. what it's called. Sick. 
Okay. Um, and she sort of racks her brain a little bit. She looks like she's kind of thinking about some of the ingredients that she might include in such a thing. 90. 90 gold. That's right. Not that that doesn't sound brilliant, but I am a self-learning type of person. If I can find a book on Orcish, I might take that first and revisit you later. Fine. Get your fucking Orcish book. Thank you very much. Uh, and I heard around it, Maeve, correct? That's right. Maeve, it was a pleasure. I now know how to conduct business in the future. Thank you for that. Sure. All right. And she looks like she's like, she eyes you and then eyes the door like she's waiting for you to leave. And in addition to that, she's like reaching into a drawer, almost like ready to take out another cigarette, like waiting for you to leave. She's like moving the cigarette in her hand a little bit. Anything else? For now, I think that's fine. On your fucking way then. Thank you very much, I will be. Uh, and <laughs> just asking on her behalf, you don't need any help in any area. <laughs> At any way. <laughs> Once we establish a business relationship, which if you find this book of orc that you're looking for, <laughs> maybe we never establish such a relationship. Fingers crossed. Well, but not that if we, don't we do, then maybe we discuss it further. Great, that sounds once again, nice. All right, I will be on my way. Thank you, Maeve. Well, in two hours, I'll have it whether you buy it or not. Oh, great. <laughs> See ya. Uh, I'll open the door and close See. it. Had you sort of stormed off or were you waiting outside? I'm pacing really? back and okay. forth, like. Pacing back and forth outside? <laughs> Prickly as a porky. Listen. Yeah. I and like her. And as you start to talk, also, blue smoke like, comes <laughs> out that window once more. I like her, I do. Is she prickly? Yes. Is she also kind of inspirational? Yes. Yeah. I just gotta find a way to get in there with her. I mean, like, where did she even learn everything that she knows, you know? Like, I mean, obviously I wasn't gonna ask her that because she wasn't gonna tell me, but like, she's a well of information and I just, I just know that we're gonna have a beautiful mentor-mentee relationship one day. I just gotta, I don't know, I gotta prove myself. That is a great outlook. That is great. <laughs> uh, you are like a ray of fucking sunshine, you know that? <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's very nice of you to say. The look on her face makes you think that wasn't a compliment <laughs> for some yeah. reason. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'm sorry that didn't go as well as you'd hoped, but perhaps we can go pay a visit to the doctor, although you seem pretty sold on her now, so. Maybe we look for that Bodhi guy again? I'm, he might, I might be able to squeeze some information out of him, or do we go talk to the doctor? Uh, sure, I mean. What'd you talk about with her? You were in there for kind of a while. After you slammed the door in my face. Sorry, I was trying to seem confident. <laughs> nah, that's okay. Uh, no, I was just asking if you needed, if I could do anything to behoove you to her. Uh, didn't really get much there either, but. I tried. Well, I haven't been in Brunk Hollow in less than 24 hours, and I feel like I have made a friend. Nice, me too, Kate, me too. Where do you want to go? I mean, what time uh, is it? Look at the sun. Some time's passed. So after the, we'll say it's another hour since you guys, you know, woke up. So you probably still have another hour and a half to kill before you're to report to the... Well, uh, I'm... I'm pretty depressed there's no books, and that's all I was really looking for. Uh, so, I mean, maybe the doctor has some stuff and he'll be a little less prickly, uh, but uh, that's the only thing I have. I'm down to check out the dock. Okay. Great, let's, uh, wait, I don't know where that is. Maeve, ah, that's not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I remember, wait, we, we, they told us where I the doctor was, yeah, right? It's, oh, it's, it's, it's IX, it's nine on the map yeah. there. Oh, the little yeah. hook apothecary. Great. And as you guys think about yes. heading in that direction, we're gonna say that Doxley and uh, TC sort of working their way back from good as gold, you're starting to walk back in the direction of that market and you see Morna, who had like, you know, sort of just some contemplation on her face and they, I'm gonna say they caught the end of, eh, actually give me perception check. Oh, oh yeah. shit. <laughs> 15. Okay. 15. I'm gonna say the TC just caught the very end of you like, 
putting that piece of paper in your pocket. Okay. So you see here, just in the thoroughfare there, a little up ahead from you, you see that uh, Doxley has like kind of a, a bushel of uh, javelins over her shoulder there. Thought about just doing a little bit of people watching here, but it's already a familiar face again. Do I see them? Yeah. You were moving slow. You were. You said you were kind of aimless. You were kind of walking yeah, through. So you're kind of really looking weird. around and see them across the thoroughfare there. Hmm. Hello, hello. Uh, Did you get all of your errands finished? I was unsuccessful. Oh, I'm afraid. Sad. She dead? Oh goodness, I don't think so. Oh, that just—it sounded sad what you just said. So no, uh, um. She was at that meeting. Oh, your friend's fancy then. Mm. I suppose she is. Oh, I was wondering how you get an invite to a town meeting like that. It sounds like we are already only one station removed. I, I was told she had a large timber claim. Oh. I, I don't know how true that is, but. Huh. And I'm sorry, were you hoping to just chop down some trees for or. or do other stuff? I, um, no. No other stuff? Oh. As a, you come, I'm sorry, as a way. stone mason, I was hoping that her lumber business and my oh. business may be Intertwine. adjacent. Yes, sir. Um, uh, our families knew each other back mm. in my girlhood, and town like this, one could make their fortune. Buildings going up so quickly. But always good to have a foot in the door with a friend. Unfortunately, I see only timber here. Very mm. little stone. But wouldn't that be good news for you? That that's something that they might need around here? I would hope so, but I worry people aren't establishing something well made. Mm. That they might not go in for such a hearty... I'm hoping that Josie could. Foundation. Yeah, that's the one. Foundation, yes. Yeah. I'm hoping that Josie could um, help me make an inroad. Mm. Or at least explain why they aren't using the stone. Well, perhaps there hasn't been anyone with an established uh, skill set. Mayhaps. Mm. Right, well, I've got to go put some of these upstairs before we head on out. You're not bringing them with you? All of these? I suppose it's quite a, a bundle. <laughs> that, that is a lot I, of ammunition. I'm not going anywhere, so I may as well try to save some money. I thought I might uh, spend the time either people watching or um, seeing what the games of chance are nearby. Ah, I can accompany you. Thank you. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> well, that's what we'll be, Doxley, if you get lonely. Right. Okay. See you at five. And with a little, we can pivot here as Doxley heads off for a moment. Before, I am afraid I was terribly rude. Mm. Oh. Not at all. Your offer was of help and friendship. Whatever I could do, I suppose, yeah. And my set of skills is stone mason. Huh. And I can defend myself. As I've you seen that. <laughs> what, sir, is your skill set? I see you run very fast up. <laughs> I do run no, very yeah. fast up. <laughs> it's true. I find light on my feet is uh, one of my skills. In the sense that I both climb quickly and quietly. I see. Mm. And your other skills, sir. Pretty good with this one here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, As you do that, that, just some of the people in the vicinity, like. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, oh. someone drawing a weapon or something, yeah. like immediately. I mean, I've, just, I've got like a big like, <laughs> sure, smile yeah. on my face, but just yeah, the motion no, itself sort yeah. of draws it. But people disperse; it's not sort of a threatening motion, but people notice it, and it's very fast. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's fast. In that time, I'm also like, reaching yeah. for my. 
<laughs> See that? <laughs> you missed it. Oh. I. Okay. Well, thank you. I should hey. hope to be your friend as well. I hope so. I I've found that it is being new here in town. You, uh, it's going to take a little while for us to ingratiate ourselves with the locals. I've no doubt. Good to stick together, I suppose. I suppose so. Do you like games of chance? I am not skilled in them, but I would be happy to watch. Hmm. A little bit of time? Shall we away? Yeah. <laughs> we saw Warren go in, into... Uh, not, damn it, I keep mixing these up. Well, so. Morna saw Warren, Mr. Oh, <laughs> head into right. the uh, yeah. Lucky right. Heathen, yes. yes. Oh. But, and you know where that is. You walk yeah. past it to get to the hotel. I'll, I'll walk start it, down yeah. there. Just pivoting off of that conversation. Are you heading back to the hotel to drop things? Is that yeah. what you're doing? Great. As you head back inside, uh, Mr. Clemens is across the desk. Find everything you need. What does it look like? Glad to see it. Uh, anywhere else I can point you? No, I think we're about to head over to the uh, EOD, correct? Oh, good. I, I was hoping that your friends would relay the message to you. It seemed that you were occupied elsewhere. Yeah. We're all set now. But all five of you planning to uh, make the way into the down wheel? From what I understand, yes. That's good. I, I was just making sure so I didn't have to track any other bodies down as volunteers. No, please don't. We'll take it. Very well. I will make a note. <laughs> For whom? For myself. Oh, <laughs> all right. And Bison. And Bison, yeah. Are we going to meet that man? I wouldn't be surprised if you did, but he may very well be up at the dig already by the time you report to EOD. Got it. From what I understand, Bison and one of the clinkers had an arrangement to both meet and then discuss the boundaries of overlap up at the dig site. And does Bison stay on the digs or does he live in the town proper? Bison has a room above EOD. Go ahead. You'll note it's a very large building. It stays on the top floor from what I understand. Understood. Your interest in bison, a, a cursory? Well, uh, we're hoping to impress some folks as newcomers today. Yes. Yes, your brother mentioned that as well. Yeah. Is that all right? That's fine. <laughs> Would we be making enemies with anyone else in town? By doing a favor for bison? Yeah. Not to my knowledge. All right. You just don't seem very jolly that we're helping. My apologies. I, I am quite over the moon. Good. Well, if you ever need any of our services. I will keep that in mind. All right. I'm going to go up to my room. Head upstairs. Put your things. Walking through the thoroughfare. Sort of, you guys are kind of moving parallel to each other, but on two different streets. You guys are headed in the direction of the apothecary, yes? Yeah. And off to your right, you see TC and Morna kind of wander up to the entrance of the Lucky Heathen and kind of look at the large wooden sign above the door there. So you guys catch a glimpse of them, maybe contemplating whether or not to uh, enter into some games of chance. <laughs> Would you guys continue further, or are you pivoting, continuing further down the thoroughfare? I would. Glad to see that they're getting on. Yeah, gambling's not really my thing. You've lost some money before gambling, or just you just don't like it? Oh, no, I just don't like it. Oh, okay. Right. I'm just going to continue to the apothecary. Yeah. You guys <laughs> continue further down that little alley there. On Before, you passed it in a different way, but now you're almost kind of going by the uh, Bernard's boarding there mm -hmm. on your right, so now you're seeing the opposite side of it because you've kind of looped around there on that mm -hmm. other... Uh, Throughway, mm -hmm. on your way to a very modest little one uh, one story house that's by the river there. The impression that you get as you get closer to it is he almost might have built his house a little too close to the river, like it's <laughs> tilted <laughs> ever Whoa. so slightly. Not like it's actively sinking, but like maybe he pulled it a little too close, like wanting mm -hmm. to be close to the water there. So the house is almost slightly askew. Ever so, like if you put a marble on the floor, it would slowly <laughs> roll into the far <laughs> corner there. As you guys approach and get a little bit closer, there's torchlight flickering in the window. Someone at least appears to be inside. Both of you give me perception checks. 
All right. Go, go, go. Come on, Doc. 14. 14. <laughs> oh, 15. 15. The two of you, as you get closer, sort of feeling good, you were able to at least connect with Maeve to sort of feel her out, and now you're feeling as you're approaching the apothecary that you're gonna get another opportunity, now seeing the light inside, that you might get another opportunity to meet another, you know, important pillar of the camp, someone that people know. And as you get within, you know, 50 feet or so of the house, you hear, <laughs> and some like crashing. <laughs> <laughs> Someone is like banging on the oh. interior, screaming, and the door opens up and someone comes out and he has like a bandage wrapped around his leg and he's like holding it as tight as he possibly can and it looks like the muscle is like contracting to the point where he can't bend the leg. Uh. Like it's stiff, his leg is stiff and he's like limping on one leg and he's coming out and he's, what did you fucking do to me? And a man kind of comes into the doorway there with kind of scraggly hair that falls down and it, he has like kind of big mutton chops that stop just below the chin and he looks out and he looks like he's about to yell to the man and that's where we're gonna stop. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no! Right before we meet Dr. Blaylock is what? where we are going oh, to end tonight. Oh no! It's already over. Oh, 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 no! Hey, I was so into it. Oh, I have questions. So uh, somebody under some kind of duress who's seeking assistance at the doctor's. Uh, oh. Um, no. Ugh. Waiting to see what that might be related to. You guys have met several of the important members of the camp. <laughs> yes, so cool. Um, you've More been to the store, and you've been to Maves, and you've been uh, to the Timberlease. Although Josie's still eluding us at this moment. Although you learned some information that Josie at least has a mm -hmm. business relationship, if not more, with uh, Bison. Given Ooh, that not he... more. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. sensual. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to see the half Kisses Bison man. for Josie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and it is closing in, once you guys are kind of done with this errand and possibly a brief visit to the Lucky Heathen, it will be about time for you guys to work your way over to Excavation On Demand and then possibly out of town and into the down wheels where you guys will maybe do your first bit of yeah. business for the camp rather than for yourself. Let's go. Possibly earning the, the first tidbit of, of reputation. Respect. Yes, yes respect. We need deserve. respect, please. <laughs> respect me, please. Um, yeah, didn't take the side of the goblin or the man. You I guys know. just let it go. Want, wow, <laughs> the bystander effect. Wow. Yeah. You guys were like, mm, someone will deal with that. I am interested in this leader. I don't want to show my hand in front of my new friend too soon. <laughs> Ilian and Kate would have interfered is all I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I think that's maybe. true. Maybe. <laughs> that does Kate seem And, and Morta would have been like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you jagged tooth little freak. That's <laughs> 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 <Let's laughs> possibility. Oh, no. Um, but that, we'll pick it right back up there. Uh, we, we split a little bit to take care of some business, and then we're gonna come back together, and we'll see what uh, excavation on demand, and possibly a, a passing meeting with Bison, if you are so lucky to see him on your way. Wow. And then we will see what the Upwield has for us in the mine. I swear, every time I look at the queue of who has done what on the Twitch app, it's different. I can't huh. find where I was, I don't know. Who to thank? Uh, wow. Can you go backwards in the other direction? I yeah, let's do that. Let's works. go backwards. Hold on one second. All right. <laughs> Jay Brownie, 1991, 500 bits. Crazy Locha gifted three subs. The Prince wow. Joker subscribed. Hello and welcome. Ali Slayer, 23, uh, gifted a sub. Legit Aaron gifted a sub. Crazy Locha, another sub. Ali Slayer did 100 bits. Crew Dog gave out 10 community subs. That's where I left thank off you. because I forgot. Uh, or because I missed it right there. So Ooh, thank you all. Thank you guys so, so much. So, so very much. Um, your support's um, incredible. Not only is your support awesome, but it allows yes. the group to. <laughs> I want some potions. Requests from Samson and Samson Imports. They can get stuff for you, but, but not, you for free. not for free. You have to pay for it. You have to pay for it. Um, I'll put that. Uh, I just put the Discord link in chat. I'll put that link in the spoiler zone uh, that Poco Doco, our wonderful mod, will be making. I think in the uh, Discord where you can talk about this episode and not have to worry about spoilies or anything. Um, so we can peruse the prices together. Yeah, once again, uh, we will also post the link to this little flip book that we made. That's what I was talking about. Oh yeah, <sighs> great. So you'll be able to browse. Um, these are all um, 
so cool. None of these, I believe, are homebrew yet. Yeah, there might be homebrew stuff later, but none of this stuff is sort of fully homebrew. This is actual items that people may recognize. Um, we can talk about, you guys would recognize what some of these are, even if you as a person don't necessarily know what they are, um, so that you won't order something that you don't know what it is. Um, so, I just have to set a quick timer. It's only uh, six days, 23 hours, 59 <laughs> minutes until oh. I can play again. <laughs> um, he's excited. We're excited. <laughs> Talent excited. loves he can't wait to <laughs> He can't wait to see you guys again next week. The pugs um, are excited. We had the nice, the pugs are excited. Um, we had a nice little sort of getting to know the town episode here. And then I think next episode, uh, it's going to kick up a notch as we... Uh, Explore the greater oh, Broncolo area okay. and what that might mean. <laughs> Get yeah. out of How dare you? Oh, oh yeah. I still have my. Oh, oh yes, yeah. I meant to oh, say yeah. thank you to the. Uh, clinky uh, clink uh, ASMR. Oh, oh and thank <laughs> you to everyone on thank TikTok. You. You're all lovely people. Yeah. Oh, You'll find yeah. us here every week, Sunday night, 7 p.m. for more DD. You can check yeah. out our YouTube for past bots. Um, tell everyone to come by, say hi. We're still in the yeah. very early Cheers. stages Cheers. of this campaign, so not too late to jump on the wagon by any means. Cheers. Get on that wagon. Yeah, get on the wagon. Get on the wagon to Broncolo. Nice and warm. What mm. mm. a moaning oh. on that shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a warm wagon. Mm. <laughs> Body warm. All right, everybody. Wait, one more thing. Oh, what? Oh, oh. What? I realized I forgot to say this. Uh, I believe on the first, we're oh, planning what? to. <laughs> I didn't oh, want... the. Yeah, Are we? Go, go okay, ahead. I didn't want to spill it. <laughs> our so our hope is to, like, once a month. Um, maybe do a little talk back after the episode. So after the episode ends, we'll just take a brief break and then we'll come back. So we, we yeah, just a little hang session. We wanted to be able to, we've okay. occasionally done those tabletop talks where we do a sort of extended look back. And we just wanted to be available to answer questions on a more regular basis. Although people do so in the Discord as well. But we'll just hang out. It's, it'll be brief, just like 30 minutes after the show to chat about the episode, about what's going on so far, about who you're most suspicious of, mm. and who's mm. who's rubbing you the wrong way, and all those good stuff. I rub only the right way. <laughs> <laughs> As you had your glass up, you heard someone rubbing some, the there right was some way. I was, that's what I was waiting for here. Um, but uh, <laughs> that is my last piece of okay. business. So uh, our, our plan is on the first to have the first one of those. Yeah, cool. Um, and maybe like Good every job. four episodes or so, we'll, we'll see. Depending, yeah, as long as folks can stick around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, might not be all of us, might get some of us, but hopefully as many as we can. Um, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week, seven o'clock, Sunday, same oh. time. Thank you. Good night, Bye, everybody. Man. Thank you. <laughs>